Okay. Well, normally I make a loud noise to get everyone to stop talking, but you all just kind of looked at me and went quiet. So that was uncomfortable and weird for me. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hey. All right, and now you're being too quiet. Now it went from respectful to rude. Hello. Oh. There we go. That's much better. Guys, yeah, if you could have really big reactions, the owner's downstairs. I'd appreciate that. Uh, welcome to Comedy from Home Sweet Home. You all know that because you're all on the show, except for you two. I think there's a couple people whose names on the list I haven't checked off. No? Neither? They're just with you? Cool. What's your name? Uh, Floyd. Floyd? Nice. And what's your name? Floyd. No, it's not. Yes. The guy who looks like Ethan Suppley came with a dude named Floyd and a dude named Clinton. That's awesome, man. That's cool. I hope your guys' reboot of My Name is Earl takes off. Um, guys, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a show. I'm gonna tell everyone. Uh, I usually go over the rules um, since it's just you two here right now. Uh, you can use this bathroom. It is 1,000 fucking degrees in that bathroom. If you have some whiteheads that are not quite ready to go, go stand in there for about three minutes. Then pop them right on the mirror and rub it around. Touch your nips. Silver, are you recording all that? Yeah. Yeah, you got the other little camera set up in there? Cool. Uh, we record people in the bathroom here. It's, uh, it's totally cool. The governor said it was all right. He's not the VP, so it doesn't matter. Um, all right. Guys, I know what everyone expects me to talk about. They tried to shoot down the T-bird. But I don't find it funny. I have no jokes about it. I think it's kind of fucked up to try and shoot a man in the head. And I think it's even more fucked up to try and shoot a man in the head and then shoot someone else. Like, come on, be considerate. See? You guys all nervous to laugh about Trump getting shot? I'm not. Let's fucking go. Why they miss? He's so big. All right. Tupac got shot, shot at night. Wait, what'd you say? Tupac got shot at night. I think they were closer when they shot Tupac. <laughs> and I think they had like more bullets and less Secret Service snipers involved. I mean, there's a lot of there were a lot of conditions in favor of the Tupac shooting that were not there for trying to assassinate a former president. Uh, so funny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I found out because my mother texted me and she's like, hey, someone just shot Trump. And my mother is like always watching Newsmax. And I was like, bullshit. And then I looked it up and I saw a CNN headline that said he fell and hurt himself. And I was like, see, bullshit. And then I Googled it real quick. And then I saw an HD video of the president getting shot in the face. And I was like, oh. Sorry, mommy. I'm sorry I called you a right wing lunatic. My mother did send back, she said, uh, I, after I said, oh yeah, I saw that, wow, crazy. She just sent back the word, demon rats. <laughs> and I had to admit, it did make me laugh. It made me laugh really hard. I don't know what Facebook group she picked that up from, but that's pretty funny. All right, we'll move on. Uh, seeing the former president always get shot did make me think about like life, right? And I was thinking, like, God damn, what if I ever become an extremely polemic leader of the free world? And then someone tries to shoot me in the brain. That suck. I wouldn't appreciate that. I would tell that guy, that's very rude. I did make me wonder though, like what is life about? And I think I was thinking about it and I, I think I figured it out. You guys ever uh, go on Pornhub and you open up like, uh, let's be modest, 36 to 37 tabs uh, and you start working your way through them, right? And then you find one you enjoy and you're watching it and you're doing your business and you're hanging out and you're watching it and you're just trying to pace yourself to the end. I think that's what our lives are like for God. God's just sitting on a cloud, stroking it, waiting our entire lives until a sniper bullet or pancreatic cancer takes us at 88. Which is why the church hates suicide so much. It's like when you're watching something, it starts buffering. You're like, fuck, 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 fuck. Ah! I came. I'm really into spinning circles. Uh, I have a fetish. Okay. Uh, I just was up in DC, I just did this show. It was an edgy comedy show, that's how it was marketed. It was terrible. Uh, it was really, it was like a, I mean, unless Gabe's watching, then it was fun. Um, and if I can go. Uh, but it was, it, was, it, was, uh, it, was, it was bad. It was like a book open mic, where everyone just wanted to say Jewish slurs. Wild. It is wild, I agree, thank you. You're welcome. Here, I'll tell you my favorite, uh, 
edgy comedy joke. Uh, hey, I just bought a new table from Kike McKikestein. Right? Oh, no. I was just sitting back there like, what the fuck does that even mean? That's literally not a joke. Those are just slurs. And then I went up and said the N-word six times and everyone got mad at me. And it's like, what are the standards, folks? I like that you didn't laugh, but he did laugh. Oh, see, yeah. It was, it was, I did, I went up and immediately was like, hey, unlike everybody, I was second to last. I said, I like the Jews. And I got nothing. I was like, you don't even, it's not even allowed to like them? <sighs> Should have said something about the Holocaust, then I would have got carried out of the room. Uh, to being up in D.C., I did think like, man, they got a problem with the homeless up there. I uh, I don't know about you guys. I'm not a huge fan of the homeless. Like, I don't like giving money to the homeless because they always shake your hands, and it's like I just did a good deed. Don't punish me for it. You know what I mean? Uh, but while I was up there, I did do something really nice. I had just eaten a little pizza in the car, and I had a marker in my pocket, so I gave that to a homeless guy, or as I'm telling the IRS, a small business loan. I don't know if you the stereotypes, but the only person in the room who laughed is the guy who just said he was Jewish. Uh, all right. I'll, uh, I'll finish on two throwaways. I haven't done these in a while. Molestation? <laughs> Call me crazy, but I'd like less molestation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I'm a, I'm a feminist. But also a realist, so there can be no less station. There's billions of people. Uh, Ma'am, do you know uh, misogyny? Very well. <laughs> Zip it. <laughs> hey, this is just my opinion, but I think if she weren't such a bitch, she could be a misogyny. <laughs> All right, everybody, are we ready to start this show? <laughs> With that sterling opening, everybody. All right, your next comic coming to the stage, your very first performer of the evening is like me, a loving father who tortures himself by coming out into sweat boxes and doing this in the middle of the week. Everybody put your hands together. Here's Kyler Mathis. Y'all give it up for Jacob, y'all. Give it up for Jacob. I mean, I'll tell you, having life vices is something else, ain't it? Spend a lot of money on weed, not enough on brake pads. <laughs> I pulled up here tonight sounding like the Andre 3000 flute album. <laughs> My son said he chose to play the violin because it sounded like our car. <laughs> now I admit, it's a lot of hate going on in the world today, but I'll admit, I'm not racist, but I am a little prejudiced. Like, if I'm looking at a food review on Google and your name sound white, I don't fuck with it. Yes. <laughs> Listen, every argument me and my wife ever have is over when and where to eat. I'll be damned if I let the taste buds of a white lady from Dinwiddie ruin my damn marriage. <laughs> Give me a Lakeisha, or Shaquita, or Sharonda. I'll trust them hoes, taste buds. I put my marriage on the line behind their ass. <laughs> Shit, it's hard enough to get in-home coochie as it is. I had to start talking in cold around my house. I went to my wife the other day, I said, babe, uh, any word on when you're gonna let me get that esophagus you promised me? <laughs> before my daughter, uh, before my wife could even say anything, here come my daughter. Esophagus, ooh, I want some. Alexa, what's esophagus? And Alexa with her trifling ass telling everybody business. Esophagus is a portion of the throat that's connected to the mouth that helps you swallow. And I said, hmm, what does daddy need with mommy's throat? And my wife's maiden name is Petty Ford, which is fitting because she's petty for no fucking reason. <laughs> the other day, this motherfucker clipped my nail so low, I had to call out of work. And I work from home. I couldn't feel my hands and feet. I told her the other day, I said, babe, I need some buns, some yams. She said, uh, huh, what store are you going to? Better go to the bathroom and handle that. Now that's what I call a self-checkout. <laughs> and it's a shame too because I'm in the best shape of my life. I quit porn and masturbating. I'm drinking fruit juice, praying and fasting. 
My meat's so strong, I can lay in the bed and make the cover jump up and fold themselves. <laughs> if I flex it right now, these shorts will fly off in the crowd. <laughs> From the looks of it, a damn man will catch them. Just my damn luck. <laughs> yeah, I knew she was the one when she ate that bag of croutons like some Cheeto puffs. <laughs> So you gotta know your lady's love language. My lady's love language is food. Every time I eat turkey next, she be hot and ready like Little Caesar's ready to go upstairs. <laughs> but it's, it's never a fair fight. She can go all night, but as soon as my turn, I'm already hollering. Three minutes in, sound like I'm falling out of a tree. <laughs> and my daughter heard it the other day because she came knocking on the door and said, oh, y'all all right in there? It sound like daddy had jumped out the window. My wife, she an asshole. She said, what it sound like, babe? She said, ah! <laughs> And anybody got kids? Clap it up if you got kids. I know at least, yeah, yeah. I'm ready for these kids to go back to school. I miss that report card money their grandparents be sending. <laughs> Shit, they pay good for celebrations. That was going towards my weed bill. <laughs> I only got to pay one thing, and that's a tooth fairy bill, and I can't even pay that. I put some money under my daughter's pillow. She can't even, she ain't even sleep good an hour yet. I'm sneaking back in there, taking that money back. Shit, I had ran out of rolling papers. I needed that $3. <laughs> she woke up the next morning, like, Daddy, Daddy, why didn't the tooth fairy visit me? And I was high, I didn't know what to say. I said, uh, uh, the tooth fairy had a BBL, baby. Yeah. Her booty was too heavy to fly here and she didn't want to get butt guts on your pillow. All right, I'm still working on that one. <laughs> yeah, my two oldest, I can't, I can't trick them no more. I can't fool them. Every time they hear that gospel music blasting from the room, they already know me and their mama in there hunching. But my kids some assholes though. These little jokers be counting the songs and see how long I'ma last. I came out the room the other day sweating. Here go my son. Dang, daddy, you made it through three songs. You did good this time. <laughs> then he walked on scene, never would have made it. <laughs> All right, y'all been fun. That's my time. I appreciate it. Scarlet Man is everybody. All right, I felt like I, I, I didn't think I had to say this, but I'll just, I'll say this to no Harlow in particular. Just shut up, don't talk during other people's sets. Because then they'll talk during your set. We go over this every time you're here. I've gotten better about it. Shut up, mind your business. Have a whole conversation. That's my point. That's the problem. <laughs> I'm supposed to be having a conversation. I'm complimenting on the set. Mind your business. <laughs> okay, well, we'll just, we'll get over the absurdity of me minding the business of running my show. Uh, all right, everybody. We're gonna, by the way, Skyler brought up uh, he brought up uh, love language. My wife hit me with that shit too. When we first started dating, she said, "You my love languages. Uh, my top two are getting gifts and uh, acts of service." That's very convenient for you. You know, that's sweet. She's like, "What are your love languages?" I was like, uh, "I don't know. Saying nice stuff to me, <laughs> not being a bitch. Uh, that's how. I, that's good for me." She's like, "Yeah, I like stuff." Does anyone want to give me stuff for my wife? That's what I'm looking for, just stuff. All right, bug. Your next comic is not a bug. In fact, he's a man. In fact, he's the only man you're gonna see in this show tonight. Everyone else is a beta cuck bitch. But your next comic is like Joe Rogan if Joe Rogan wasn't a pussy. Put your hands together for the king of MMA comedy, Jack Parker. Your next comic is from a no-kill shelter. We actually adopted her here at the bar. We're keeping her safe. She was safe there, but she's safer here, everybody. Put your hands together for our favorite little, I was supposed to say guy, but that's weird. For, yeah, in fact, all of the jokes about you being a dog get, get weird for me. Um, your next comic isn't a dog. She's a human being, and she deserves rights. Grace Moyer.
Jacob. Everybody knows if I were an animal, I would be a tuxedo cat. Obviously. Uh, anyone here high on marijuana? Cool. Cool. Oh my God! Thank you. It's um, it's like my take on athleisure. I love you. I like it. Thank you. Oh my God! I love you. It's okay, I appreciate it. I, I'm okay being interrupted if it's people complimenting me. Um, because really, you know, I do this so that people will compliment me, pretty much. That's my love language. Um, yeah, I'm, I actually just celebrated my one year of doing stand-up. Um, it's been really cool. It's been really good. Uh, you know, I've I'm really proud of myself. I've done a lot, been in a lot of shows, uh, and most importantly, I have not had sex with a single stand-up comedian. Uh, remember earlier when Jack Parker asked this room? if uh, we've ever been around someone who thinks they're a lot more entertaining than they are, yes. as if we weren't at an open mic comedy <laughs> night. <laughs> oh God. Uh, anybody here have beliefs? Woo. Okay, yeah, you Sorry. get me. No, 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 you I get me. Get Wait, no, what's your name? I'm Harlow, but they're mean to me because I have boots, so I don't want to get in trouble. Harlow, say whatever you want. I, I love not. you. I'm, I'm on new meds, I'm good. But keep going, I love mm. you. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm off old meds. So, yep. Stop taking my birth control. No, because, guys, for real, I was like, I thought I was a lesbian. And then I stopped taking my birth control, and then fucking Jacob brought his baby around me. <laughs> while I was ovulating and something like happened and I had sex with a man. It's fine, it's cool. Uh, he looks like a little lesbian. <laughs> so it's fine. Uh, anyways, beliefs. Um, I don't really have a lot of beliefs because I think they're kind of all equally stupid. You know, like, uh, Men will make fun of me for believing in astrology, but then invest in crypto. <laughs> Those words aren't real. <laughs> or like, um, you know, I used to know a girl who would make fun of uh, people for believing in God, but like she fully believed she was a witch. <laughs> I was like, okay, you're gay, you're hot, you cast little spells and that's dope. But like, you, you don't have magic powers. <laughs> you don't, okay? Uh, the closest um, I came to like having beliefs really is believing astrology, but just in the sense that like, um, I slept with every zodiac sign of man and then decided I didn't want to sleep with men anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you guys know how to drive? No. I'm not surprised by that. I love you. I'm proud of it. Yeah. Yeah, you should be. Um, but so, okay, when you drive, do you use uh, your Google Maps? Yeah. Um, recently, I was using Google Maps and uh, they told me to keep straight past Hooters. And I was like, that's interesting, okay. And then they told me multiple times and when I went past the Hooters, it was like not at an intersection. Like there was no right turn lane that led into Hooters. There was no fork in the road at Hooters. I was like, why are you so worried about me going to Hooters? And that was when I realized that Google Maps is homophobic. Okay, I'm in the car, I'm listening to Chapel Roan, and I'm on the way to Joanne's Fabrics. 
Not Michael's, Joanne's. Okay, they don't let you in there if you're not at least a two on the Kinsey scale. Uh, but anyways, uh, I went to Hooters and I did not keep straight. And I need to find a better end to that joke, but that's what it is right now. Uh, love you guys. Let's get Jacob. What? Uh, oh, um, uh, materials to make my elaborate outfit for the Chapel Rome concert. Follow me on Instagram. You can see the pictures. It's really iconic. Grace Moyer, everybody, who's about to walk back up here and get her phone and drink. Everybody, give it up for Grace Moyer one more time. Encore, encore. There we go. <laughs> All right. Remember, check her out on Instagram if you want to look at her outfits from Joann's. Uh, your next comic is the king of cosplay. That's what the K's on his shirt stand for. Everybody, the number one Tony the Tiger impersonator in the city, Moo Kazo. Yay, hey, home sweet home. How y'all doing? Yeah. Good? What up, Silver? This is for you right here. You are, uh, keep recording. I want you to record this because I want to make sure I'm on a clip that they're going to have because I'm pretty sure this you're going to have. I see you've been doing this for a minute, recording sets. I saw some stuff you did from 2010, and I know like maybe 10 years later, it's going to be a documentary and shit. So I'm going to make sure I'm on there. The documentary not going to be about comedy, though. It's going to be about them three hookers he got buried in his backyard. <laughs> but uh, this clip might make it on there. I just want to... You know what I mean? Like, I didn't even know he was like that. He was the, that's gonna, the comedy gonna be a sad note and shit. What do you be doing with all that comedy footage and shit? You be going home just masturbating the comedy and shit? Just, just hyping you guys. Just, look how he moves that mic stand. <laughs> oh my God, he just did a callback. <laughs> oh shit, comedy comes in threes. <laughs> that's cool. Shout out to Silver though. If this going, you gonna, you gonna put this on YouTube next week, all right? So if this going on YouTube next week, August 5th, come to Bramley Park. It's uh, Positive Vibes Only. All of the Virginia's hottest comedians is gonna be there. It's free, it's in honor of positive mental health. So you can come, get a free comedy show. It's gonna be improv with Bridge Nine Theater. It's gonna be uh, com comedy from uh, all the comics that, not none of the comics you're gonna see here if they're terrible, but some of the ones that's good, they're gonna be there. Uh, and uh, it's, it's August 5th, and follow MU804. I'm sorry, y'all, I really gotta do this, you know what I mean? I get to y'all in a minute. But it's, uh, ain't nobody watching your shit. Look, uh, <laughs> like, nah, I'm just cool. So uh, I'm gonna talk about some, some shit they were talking about, the, uh, the Biden and Trump shit. I hate the fact that everybody want to be, I'm glad that we, at, at, at stand-up comedy, this is where you're supposed to talk about the shit, but like everybody just want to be a comedian on Facebook. This shit is not fucking funny, to be honest, as them is our only two options, Biden and Trump. That shit is fucking sad, to be completely honest, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like and, say, and, and like, I like the fact that Trump don't, don't bow to none of the shadow government bullshit, but I hate the fact that I know that the people he put in charge are gonna create policies designed to destroy black people. And that's a fact. And say what you want about Biden and them, but at least I know that the policies they make, that's gonna fucking kill everybody. And that's equality, that's what you want, right? You know, that's what I'm saying. So if I had to choose, but honestly, I feel like we should vote for Michelle Obama. Right in, I'm, I'm coming out tonight to campaign for Michelle Obama. We starting it, we gonna try to get it because it makes sense. And I think I can even sell it to the Trump supporters because they kind of racist and shit. I'm be like, look, America is a mess. Who the fuck been cleaning up all the messes since America started anyway? Like, you know what I mean? Like, for real, since America started, it was a mess. What they say, make the niggas do it. And we misogynists too, so we like, make the bitches do it. So black women been cleaning up America. It makes sense. Vote for Michelle Obama. She'll get this shit straight. You know what I mean? Dudes, all we got, if, imagine if Michelle was on the ticket, the girl power, the woman power, the feminine power, all that energy that's gonna come together, they're gonna be working hard. We can go the fuck home and play video games, dude. 
you like, I don't care who you like, Biden or Trump, let's go home and take a break. Men, let's take the fuck a break right now. Let women run the country. That's what I'm trying to say. That's Michelle Obama, 2024. That, that's what I, I came up here to say. Also, Positive Vibes Only, 2024, August 5th at Bramley Park. We're going to do it that way, too. Um, I, I had some date night jokes, but it don't look like no date nights in here tonight. Like, <laughs> like it's cool, man. Like, it's the only comedy, man, that you can't come up in here with a wheelchair. That's fucked up. I'm going to go get somebody in a wheelchair and come just to sue, because I need to come up and shit. Like, <laughs> like it's cool. Justin really want to do comedy. He brought his ass up, this motherfucker. Like, we're going to get this shit, goddammit. Hell yeah. This, uh, this is cool, man. Um, how, how you doing? You, you a comic, too? Oh, man. Who in here not a comic? Real quick. Comic what you do for a living? Check, check one. Oh, I fixed it. He got a short cord. Thank you. The cords is longer in Petersburg. <laughs> what you do for a living? Digital analyst. Okay, for who? Oh shit, that's not a good sign. <laughs> he said, Oh shit, I forgot. Huh? Co-star. What that? What's that? Yeah. Okay. You said you own all that. Okay. Okay. All right, so so and you said and so so what do you so do you actually be working every day or you just be waiting for somebody to call you to do some shit? <laughs> yeah, okay, that's how I, I I work I do I do telecommunications and uh, I do uh, well I ain't got time to really talk about it I just got the light so I got to come back and talk about it but I do retentions you know what I'm talking about people got their subscription you ever be walking and you get that text that say thank you for your subscription you be like fuck I forgot to cancel and you got to call somebody you got to talk to me. <laughs> And basically, I get cussed the fuck out for a living. Like, it's awesome. They pay me well, though, but I gotta, like, tell people to their face that they a liar. They're like, I called a cancel. No, you didn't. Let's talk about this shit. I work on Sundays. You ever get cussed out with Jesus music in the background? <laughs> this shit is very disheartening. But one more time. August 5th, Bramley Park. It's free. Positive vibes only. I got a whole bunch of comedians. It's gonna be awesome. Y'all give it up for Home Sweet Home every Tuesday. And Silver Person here. And that future Netflix documentary. And them poor prostitutes is buried in this backyard. This move cuzzo. I'm out. Peace. Luke Cuzzo, everybody. Blowing up my man Silver Spot. What he does with those wayward children is nobody's business. Oh, man, Silver. The worst thing about this is that Moo didn't even plan that out. He just wrote Silver, and then all that stuff about you murdering prostitutes was off the top of his head. That's just how, that's just how he feels. That wasn't even planned. All right, we're going to keep this thing moving, everybody. Your next comic coming to the stage. He is actually Harlow's number one fan, and he is so disappointed that she won't be up here to see him. Everybody, put your hands together for James Copeland. Thank you. Yeah, I show up. Shut up. Thank you. Oh, my favorite audience member. Okay. I was scared. Okay. I'm going to start a company that caters exclusively to boomers. Um, our first product is going to be a bumper sticker that says, Nags Head, the two things my wife does best. Um, you know what's really messed up about society, guys? You know what really ticks me off? Cops, they always ask you, you know, if you've had anything to drink tonight. They never ask if you had anything to eat, though, right? I, I told the arresting officer that. Unfortunately, he didn't buy that point. Um, unrelated, if I could get a ride home tonight, something wrong with my car or whatever. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're driving, right? Uh, no, I, I think you're good, dude. I, I would trust you behind the wheel. I don't have a license, but my, my date has a license, so... <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Okay, I was like... <laughs> um, if you guys haven't noticed, my uh, body is like a work of art. It's not for everybody. Alright, how come when a girl says that she's not wearing panties, it's considered sexy? But when I say it, the Walmart clerk tells me I have to buy the pants I just tried on. Yeah, it's, it's probably because it was in the children's department. You're right. Um, you know, I'm, I'm worried that I'm one of those guys that misinterprets a girl being nice as flirting. Like, uh, I was talking to a girl, and, and um, she was being really nice to me, and I asked her on a date, and she said, you know, I really only see you as a brother. I just can't believe I misread my sister's vibes, you know? 
Yeah. Um, so I use two search engines primarily. I use Google and DuckDuckGo, but I use them very differently. Um, like the last thing I Googled was Israel UN policy. The last thing I duck duck goed was fat slut ass fuck. Yeah, you gotta stay informed and entertained. This guy knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. Um, I also watch a lot of gay porn. Um, I'm not gay. I just like supporting an industry that's 100% run by men. Yeah, I think we got that and uh, vape shops. Um, yeah. Uh, if you guys haven't noticed, uh, Asian hate is back on the rise. Uh, my wife is she's a uh, Japanese, and she was walking out of a restaurant the other day, and someone came up to her and threw rice right at right at her. I was fucking furious, you know, especially when I found out my cousin did it on my wedding day. All right. You know, not everybody knows the, the PC terms for everything. Like uh, the other day, someone referred to my wife as uh, an Oriental, and I had to be like, hey, man, you can't say that anymore. Um, you know, if, if you're referring to an object, you use Oriental, but with people, you say Asian. And he said, that should still apply since I got married to a Sailor Moon body pillow. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. I'm, I'm married to a human. Um, my, my wife does make a lot more money than me. Um, some people, yeah, thank you. Some people ask me if that makes me feel emasculated ever. And I'm like, no, of course not. You know, the only time I feel emasculated is when she calls me Jessica while she pegs me up the ass. Um, you know, these days you gotta be careful who you compliment. Like the other day I was at work and I walked up to him and I said, Stacy, you look great. Have you lost weight? Have you been working out? And she had to remind me that I helped pay for the abortion. That did pretty well last time. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Um, you guys, I hear uh, Trump is actually doing a lot better with the LGBT community right now. It's because he, I don't know if you saw this on the news, he got his ear pierced on the gay side. <laughs> All right, I did not think that one was gonna work, let me tell you. <laughs> I was like, this would've killed 20 years ago. But uh, this, this is my last uh, bit. Um, this is my impression of an anti-woke guy. So th this is an anti-woke guy. You fucking believe this? Can't even take a fucking nap anymore? Back in my day, you were allowed to sleep in. But now everybody's going around saying, I'm woke in here. All right, thanks guys, I'm James. Good for James, everybody. I actually, I have a lot of sympathy for that character in his last joke. Uh, I also uh, love to nap. In fact, people said I'm nappy-headed. <laughs> Boy, you can't say nappy-headed anymore? Uh, this woke shit's crazy. Just, just kidding. Don Imus told me that joke. Uh, all right, we'll keep this thing moving. Hey, your next comic is not, uh, he doesn't sleep. Uh, he's addicted to Adderall. Uh, everybody, put your hands together. This, uh, this guy runs a show over at Another Round, um, and he will performing at Brambley Park. It's a mental health awareness uh, it was offered to me, but I turned it down. Everybody, put your hands together for Sloppy Seconds, Pat Logan! Yeah. Uh, your next comic, everybody. Are you guys ready? I said, are you ready? Yeah, come on, Floyd! Put your hands together for Blake Carlson! How we doing, hey? Hey, hey, what was your name again? What was your name? Harlow, how you doing, Harlow? Good, but leave me alone. I've been doing enough. All right, all right, all right. Just one thing, Harlow. Just one thing, okay? I've got a dick. I don't and care. And a butt, Harlow. I've got a dick and a butt. And the rest of you, you guys know what that means. I have a dick and a butt. That means that means jizzness in the front, farty in the back. Everybody, that's what I'm talking about. You know who doesn't like that joke? My girlfriend doesn't like that joke. 
You know, my grandma doesn't like that joke. But, but the, the only difference between my girlfriend and a blow-up doll, yeah, is that a blow-up doll would save me from drowning, right? And, uh, you know, my, 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 uh, my, my girlfriend recently, she shaved her happy trail, right? And for those, of, for those of you guys that don't know what a happy trail is, it's that, it's that bit of hair that goes from, goes from the belly button all the way to the tip of the Libya, Libya menorah. And she shaved it off. And you know what? Now when I go down on her, I can't find my way back up. And I think she did that on purpose because we've been dating for two years now and she knows better than anybody that I need context clues. Uh, I, uh, no, but I, I think the quickest way for you guys to get to know me is I'm just going to run through a, um, a very short synopsis of my sex life. Um, so in elementary school, I learned what sex was. Those were the basics. And then in middle school, I was eighth grade class treasurer. And then in high school, I was treasurer again, this time for the Latin club. Exciting. And then I went to college, and it's going where you think it's going. I joined an improv team. <laughs> and an ultimate frisbee team, <laughs> and I rushed a fraternity, an engineering fraternity, got rejected by the fraternity, a pandemic happened, I turned 20, and six months after that, I lost my virginity. So it's been a, thank you. It's a steady clip, you know, I put in my 10,000 hours, I think. But, um, and a lot, some people think that's a little old, like 20 is like a little old to lose your virginity, but you know what? Most people had, have not even been treasurer once right, before they lose their virginity. So I was putting in the work. I was crunching the numbers, having meetings with the Latin club president and vice president and secretary? Secretary. Um, so, and I'm, but I'm, I'm, that was four years ago. I'm 24 now, but I still got it. And um, 24 is like the age when your friends start to get married. And I have a friend who got engaged and she was looking for someone to be a, the officiant at her wedding. And I was like, I would love to officiate your wedding. And she's like, that, that'd be amazing. I just gotta, you know, let me talk to Danny first. And Danny was like, I think we'd rather have an adult do it. And that hurt my feelings because like he's only one year older than I am. And we're both 5'10", so I don't really know where this like macho facade is coming from. And this is like also coming from a dude who called his ex-girlfriend a bitch for stealing his, like, rave finger lights. So, I value his opinion a whole lot. Um, I, I saw a vanity license plate recently. I saw, it was a New York license plate, and it said CPA space W-I-D-O. This a vanity license plate, it said CPA widow. I didn't know you could get that much information across in a vanity license plate. Like, this woman has loved and lost, and she can do your taxes. <laughs> It's eight characters worth. It's, it's like the most efficient dating profile. I, I would love a New Yorker who could tell me about my marital tax benefits. That'd be amazing. <laughs> you just gotta put the ones in the, okay. Um, I don't see Jacob, but. Hell, oh, hey Jacob. It's cool. Follow the sound of my voice. I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna play Fuck, Mary Kill with the Beatles. I'm gonna play Fuck, Mary Kill with the Beatles. If I had to play Fuck, Mary Kill with the Beatles, I know exactly what I would do. I would kill John, I would marry Paul, I would fuck George and kill Ringo. I, I don't have anything against Ringo, I just like, I feel like John is like the free space of Fuck, Mary Kill. And I had two bullets anyway, so. All right, that's been my time. My name is Blake Carlson. Give it up for your host, Jacob McFadden. Blake Carlson, everybody. Man, that was crazy. The comics in the stairwell were talking to each other so loud, they didn't hear Blake say, where's Jacob? Is Jacob up here? Jacob, follow the sound of my voice. I had to literally dive between them and push them apart, and then turn around and see three comics look at me like, why are you touching me? That's pretty rude. It, I agree, it was pretty rude, but I bet when we break this down, we'll be on different sides of the arguments. Uh, all right, let's keep it going. Your next comic hates rudeness. In fact, he loves manners. Your next comic, actually, holy shit, I'm gonna turn it down for your next comic. Uh, your next comic is the Carnival Barker, Richard Comedy, put your hands together for Palestinian activist, Will Miner. Yeah, keep it going for Jacob McFadden. Why does he always turn the mic down for me? 
What the fuck is his problem? Give it over him. He's very short. You have to conceal carry. Come on. His son was born and he gave him a gun. It's an adorable, cute little 22. It's baby's first gun. <laughs> I know, dude. You can't trust me. I know. I know. I know. I go to a bar. I, I don't know, fellas. I'm looking around the room. I heard it's uh, according to a uh, uh, chaperone. It's a brat summer. But looking around the yes. room, hold the phone, friend. I'd rather say it's the uh, summer of big fellas in little shorts. Come on now. Yeah. Look around this room. Holy shit! Look at all this man meat hanging out. Look at this whole yes. table. Holy hellbenders! You guys should be on the cover of GQ. <laughs> God damn, good, good looking guys, the sky's out the thigh. I know, aren't we just tired of trying to hide it all? We're just like, we look horrible up top. Let's just show up what we got. <laughs> just like, all I have is the calf and the quad. I'm gonna die on that hill. Oh my goodness. I know guys, I'm sorry if I'm a bit overwhelming. I've had a really, I've had a rough week. I've had a lot. Okay, I lost my job. I lost my job this week. Yes, yes, I was like, I was working with the Secret Service. I was supposed to watch a building. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, the day just kind of got away from me. They were like, well, it was the East Building. And I was like, I thought it was the West Building. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yo, did you guys not hear about the shooting? Yeah. Did you guys not hear about the shooting? Did you guys hear about this? Apparently, they shot the Huck Tall girl. Uh, yes! Yeah, they got her. It was Gypsy Rose. Uh, Gypsy Rose fucking got her. She was just like, you're hogging my limelight, Huck Tall girl. Woo! Moo, you're looking at me kind of confused. You're looking at me like I got two heads, like I was on a quick TikTok and said, Huck Ta. You're looking at me like that. <laughs> She's very famous for giving a blow. She lost her job. It's really quite sad. She'll lose everything. Oh, that's really sad. <laughs> also, I don't know. Do you guys hear, like, apparently there's already conspiracy theories. It's like crazy, like, that shooting just happened, and my mom was like, did you hear about the shooting? I was like, Mom, I've seen three different angles of this shooting. It's wild how quick this happened. And it's crazy that people are already like, this is fake, this is a psyop, this is aliens and the lizard people. But I do not think that this was a fake event. Are you kidding me? Donald Trump is a showman. If he faked his own assassination, it would have been way more fucking bullshit! <laughs> He would have been giving a speech just like, Nancy Pelosi, what a slut. And then they would have brought a person and been like, Mr. President, we have an announcement. We've just been given word that there was a bomb underneath your stage. The only way to defuse this bomb is if someone sexually harasses it. <laughs> and then Trump like whips out an American flag and puts it on like a cake and it's just like, you're stupid, you're dumb. And then they save the day. <laughs> Okay, never mind. He should have been shot. Whatever. Sorry. I'll play KTU to you people. Oh, boy. What else is going on? I know there's a lot of contention right now. There's a lot of contention in the world, right? I understand there's a little bit of bat, uh, beef in the rap community, right? There's a little bit of beef in the rap community. I understand there's some beef between Kendrick and Drake. Yes, is this true? White people, do you agree? Yes? You guys hear about this? No, I'm with you guys. I don't listen to rap. I listen to country music. <laughs> I, I, I know. No, like, no, seriously. Everyone looks at me like, we know you listen to country. I also love country music because, like, if you ask white people, white people are like, we stole that from black people. And then everybody heard Jason Aldean, and black people are like, you can keep it. <laughs> you know Jason Aldean? He wrote that song, like, Sundown Town, Get Out of My Town, You're Not Welcome Here. You know that famous song? That asshole? I don't know, I just wish, I wish that country artists would beef in their lyrics the same way rap artists beefed in their lyrics. I think that would be so cool. Like if like during like, you know, like Willie Nelson, Johnny Cash were going at it, Johnny Cash would be like, I am a straight up gangster, fuck around and find out. If you keep talking all that bullshit, I'll stick my dick inside your mouth. And then Willie Nelson would come back at him and be like, your mom is a Midwest hooker. She makes a living licking balls. She's fucked everyone in this town and sleeps in bathroom stalls. Alrighty, I'll go ahead and get out of there on that one. Thank you so much for putting up a thing. Let's get Jacob McFadden back up here. How's Will Minor, everybody? Will Minor. Several bottles of Kentucky Gentleman broke downstairs during a set. Uh, all right. Your next comic. You saw him recently diving in front of the president of the United... Sorry, the future president of the United States of America, bravely shielding him with his own body, you know, after everything had happened. Your next comic is uh, a patriot. He's a hero. And this Friday... He's turning 22. Everybody, put your hands together 
for American Hero, Lieutenant Chris Sipple. Yeah, guys, when I found out that uh, the President Trump was shot, uh, I was doing my duty for the Army Reserve, so I uh, was protecting President Kennedy. RFK Kennedy. I guess we'll go with that one. No one knows who RFK is. All right, we're just going to skip that one. Did anybody at least see that he got shot in the ear? Yeah. So his ear is going to be our ear next because we're going to have to hear about it a lot. <laughs> But imagine if, like, imagine if he did get shot and he was actually killed, right? Um, white people would have had the biggest riot ever. It would have been the whitest riot ever. Bass Pro, RVA Camp World, and uh, Walmart would have been all looted. So I'm an uh, automotive YouTuber. I create videos based upon cars. Does that, does that sounds exciting. Well, I have an exciting build series. That build series is called... How do you build a car if you never had a father? Well, I guess people have fathers here. Not, not a bunch of laughs, whatever. Uh, well, in that build series, there's a video called uh, How to Hold a Flashlight if you never had, never had a father. And with that video, I'm helping a lot of people because there's people that can relate to me. There's, there's one video called How do you tell the difference between your father's flashlight and flashlight? After the divorce of my parents, uh, my dad left both behind and I had to figure out which one was the flashlight. <laughs> uh, I was raised by a single mom and a single grandmother though and uh, the thing that I learned from both of them was I learned uh, where a period ends and where in metapol starts I guess nobody has a mother or a grandmother I must be the only one that had a single mom and single grandmother fuck me <laughs> so uh, who here is was born between like I don't know I guess we'll go with Patrick Logan's year 89 to like 93 94 all right, all right. Uh, do you guys remember texting and driving used to be a privilege? Not a fad. Not everybody could afford unlimited talk and text. You'd have to wait till after nine to make that phone call or send those texts for free. All right, guess not a lot of uh, you guys remember. <laughs> uh, does anybody here go to the gym at all? Like, uh, yeah, you see, uh, do you ever see those guys that are like five, 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 six? They have the biggest egos. They slam the weights down. You just want to walk up to him and be like, hey, buddy, just, just set him down. You're already right there. Just set him down. You're right there. New Orleans recently uh, came out and said, uh, you know, there's got, there's got to be a copy like this of the Ten Commandments on every school and every classroom and every public school. They act like that's going to stop the floods from coming. <laughs> As a kid, I remember Thrasher Magazine. Does anybody remember that? You see the T-shirts, the kids, and Zoomies. Walking out with it, they don't even know what it means. Well, as a kid, I thought it was a hardcore porn mag. My friend one day was like, hey, I have a Thrasher magazine, wanna see it? And I was super excited. Then I was like, this was not the curved wood I was expecting. <laughs> Justin Timberlake was in the news a couple weeks ago, probably about a month ago, he was arrested for a DUI. Do you guys remember this? Yeah. You know how the cop was able to tell that he was drunk? His eyes were not in sync. <laughs> Uh, let's see. It's really hot here. It's, isn't it hot in here? It's been hot like for this whole summer. I, well, it's partially my fault. I blame myself. I blame Taylor Swift. We've been taking a private jet to going to Baskin Robbins in Wisconsin. It's really good out there. We're doing a lot to the ozone layer. We're having a good summer, but it's a cool summer for the ozone layer. Um, let's see, Boeing, has anybody been following Boeing recently? Over the past year, they've been losing doors while they're in the atmosphere, the planes, just doors are ripping off. No one knows about this. All right, so some people do. Did you, did you hear about that the, uh, the Boeing spaceship had two astronauts stuck in space? But they were safe, apparently. They, they couldn't get them home. But apparently, uh, Boeing's safety is always up in the air. <laughs> I'll get out of here on this. Uh, Let's see, yeah. So my job sent out an email to sign up for their 401k. Has your job ever done this? Yeah. 
before I signed up and I was like, this is going to be the longest goddamn cancer walk I've ever done. That's been my time. Missed. What? Is he really 21? Yeah, he, well, no, he's, well, yeah, he's 21 today, but he'll be 22 on Friday. Oh, uh, okay. Why, how old are you? I'm 21, that's a lot. Are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you guys could form a club. That's what's up. Hopefully you follow through on it six years from now. <laughs> um, that's a joke about you committing suicide. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a joke about you getting murdered by Courtney Love. Uh, uh, all right, we're going to keep this thing moving. Uh, your next comic offered me drugs and drinks to go next. And now I don't see them. <laughs> to be clear, I wasn't taking them. I was just like, uh, yeah, you can just do that. That's fine by me. I'm going to say their name and hope they appear. Usually you have to do it in the dark in front of a mirror three times, but I'm gonna go for it. Here we go. Everybody, put your hands together for Harlow. Literally, literally said, hey, can I go next? I want to do my set and leave. And then five minutes later is not around, knowing how it works. They're in the bathroom next. What, yeah, what's your, what's your deal? Like, are you, a, are you kidnapped? Are, yeah, I know, I'm like, that's what I'm saying. I can get some of the boys to sit around you and like form a shield if you need. It's better than Donald Trump's was, I mean. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, Monty can suck up a bullet. Uh, All right, we'll just we'll keep this thing moving. Uh, your next comic is not Harlow. Uh, everybody, put your hands together for Adele Prashant. Uh, hey yo, what the fuck is up, home sweet home? Woo! Fuck yeah! Let's go, let's go. All right, before I start doing anything. I just want to say everything that's coming out of my mouth tonight is a joke. I'm just trying to be funny, nothing serious. Please don't take it as anything else. It's just a joke and I'm trying things out. All right, all right? You'll understand why I'm saying this right now, all right? Uh, okay, so cigarettes. Cigarettes are so fucking good. Like what the fuck? Why are cigarettes so good? Anybody smoke cigarettes here? Right? Dude, it's so fucking good. Like every time, like, you get done with your shit and just like, take a hit. It's like, it's so fucking good. You know, it's so fucking good. But also you die. You die. It's so fucking good that you die. Like, you will die, for sure. For sure. Keep smoking, you will die. But also, it's so fucking good. Why? I have a solution. But also, I'm telling you right now. It's pretty out there. It's like, out there. Like, very out there. Alright? I'm just telling you right now. Instead of aborting babies, how about we harvest them? You know? Right? Instead of aborting them, let's harvest them. Like, are you pro-life, pro-choice, or pro-harvest? Pro-harvest. You know? It's like, you're saving twice. Like, you're saving a baby's life, and later, when your grandma's about to die because she smoked the hell out of her lungs and needs a lung transplant, you can take that lung. You're saving twice. There's a special place in heaven for you. You're saving twice. All right. Uh, so the other day I was scrolling through Instagram and I was like, all right, what's going on? So I just came across this live where this like lady with a gun, like this is live. She's like, just shot someone in the room. And then she was like, keep playing with me. Keep fucking playing with me, with life. Like the camera is everything going on. And then she turned, 
she showed her dude and was like, are you gonna keep playing with me now? And he was like, no, 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 I don't think. She was like, are you gonna keep playing with me now? He was like, no, no, you know? I was like, that's wild. That's fucking wild. Like Trump got shot, you know? In this scenario, America is this crazy fucking bitch. America is this crazy fucking bitch. She was calm for a bit. The last assassination, she was like, keep playing with me, bitch. Keep playing with me. And then she calmed herself down. She calmed herself down. And now she was like, what the fuck are these two options? What the fuck are these two options? I'll take things to my own hand now. I'm that crazy bitch. She's back. That bitch is back. You know? But please don't shoot people. I, I, I'm really saying this. Please don't shoot people. It's bad. It's really bad. Please. Please don't shoot people. It's, it's an awful thing. That's, that's not how we work things out. It's communication. It's talking, you know? Like, please don't shoot people. You know, like, <coughs> I'm trying to apply for citizenship. So please don't shoot people, especially presidents. So, yeah. But yeah. All right, thank you so much, y'all. I'm Prashant. It's been a great night. Thank you for coming. Prashant, everybody. Give it up for Prashant. And I always like to take this chance to agree with Prashant. Bees don't shoot people. People shoot people. I'm gonna save that for the next edgy showcase in DC. Uh, all right, your next comic. Hey, they need no introduction. You all know them, everybody. Put your hands together for Harlow. Hi, I'm Harlow, and I just wanna make one thing clear real quick. I've been doing stand-up here for six years. I've done it in three states now. So I'm not gonna let you guys shit on me more. I'm so sorry. When I was gone, I saw my ex get stabbed for touching me wrong. So I grew a backbone, so show some fucking respect. Now let's get into the jokes. I've earned my time here. And you know what? I can heckle a little if I want, because I'm complimentary. I'm not being rude or obnoxious or drunk like I used to be. For example, I have six years off opiates next year. I fucking did that! Harm reduction is real, it saves lives, and I want to work in it. So let's shut up about the drug addiction and the homelessness, because you know what? I paid rent when I came back. You know what? I have money right now. Life is good, so we'll drop that right now. Now let's get into some fucking jokes. So, Will and Tyler are the comedians I respect the most out of this entire place. Because you know what? I was homeless because of some shit I don't want to talk about and you don't get to know. And you know what? They never judged me, they never called me an addict, and they always held it down for me. So those are my favorite comedians. Pay attention to their sets and cheer for them. Now let's tell some fucking jokes. Shut up, Jacob. I don't give a shit about what you say. I'm funny. Anyways, someone said something about comedy and be or like country and beefs. I'm gonna clear that up. I'm from Texas. I spent four to 18 in Houston, Texas. If you don't think that country has beefs, listen to Dolly Parton, listen to Johnny Cash. He doesn't have to call out a, a fucking other artist to call out the jail system. Dolly Parton called out capitalism nine to five. So let's check our country history before we talk about Morgan Wallen. Cause honestly, he's a stain on country for me who saw Gretchen Wilson at nine years old if you don't know Gretchen Wilson, you probably know. I'm a redneck woman. Yeah, I can sing, I do stand up, fuck all of you. Um, so she sings I'm a redneck woman and she talks about how people judge her for having Walmart underwear, right? You know what, she gets fucked, she gets laid and she gets Houston rodeo spots. Fuck capitalism, I haven't bought new clothes in two years and I look good no matter what I wear. Style cannot buy, money cannot buy style. Anyways, let's go on to the jokes now that I'm done re reasserting that don't fuck with me. I have a backbone now. So, I did mushrooms last night because, you know, I'm in Richmond, went in Rome, right? And the last time I did mushrooms, I think the last time I did mushrooms, I was here. And it was like a cool, like, one or two grams. And I kept trying to jail jokes about, like, Hulk Hogan, like, my usual shit. 
And then I kept being like, fuck, I'm on mushrooms. So like, I can handle my shit. I always take breaks in between doing mushrooms. So the tolerance thing is not a thing for me. But I love this for me, that's why I have a backbone. I recently quit a Bill of Ian Zoloft because I have bipolar and I was afraid to quit them because, you know, almost six years ago, go me, I quit opiates. And I have a year, I, I celebrated a year off opiates in this town. So all of you can fuck yourselves. If you don't know who the fuck I am, you should. Anyways, now I'm about to celebrate six years off opiates. So I was very scared to quit the meds I've been on since a child because I know how bad withdrawal is, fair? And I got to the point, not to quote away, AA, because I'm a harm reductionist. Like, I'm not Cali sober, I'm Netherlands sober. I'm good at doing drugs and I do them when I want. Anyways, um, I quit that and I got on new meds. I love them, they're great, like I'm very stable, life is fun. Instead of having like anger, sadness, and people pleasing, I have a lot of emotions. No joke, I have the feelings wheel in my favorites on my iPhone. Because I'm like, this is happy, but I don't know what to call it. So I will literally go into my phone and be like, what is this called? And it's like contentment. And I'm like, oh, cool. I'm very Irish. I'm very much like my dad. If I cry, I'm angry. And if I cry because I'm sad, I'm embarrassed. Anyways, so last night I did like 2.5 Gs, a cool number for me. Because the last time I was in Richmond, I did seven Gs. I went out, I had a blast, right? So I'm an idiot. Just kidding. I'm just not a doctor. So I didn't realize that I would have visuals for the first time in my life doing mushrooms on this 2.5. And I knew I needed to go home because I, thank God they're not here. They're too dumb to be here anyways. But I was with my homie and these two dumb bitches. I'm sorry, I don't support all women. Some of you are fucking dumb. Anyways, these two bitches were like, this one girl was like, no, I totally get it. I've been tripping for years too. And I wasn't like, if, if there's anyone you want to be unexpectedly tripping balls, it's me. Like, I've done stand-up on mushrooms, if you know, you know, and it's very funny. I love doing stand-up for the comics, because, like, no shade, this is not what I want to do for my life. Like, I beat eating disorders, and I, I love my body, but I don't want a million people to see my body. Sorry, my wife. So, like, I just want to write on animation shows. I'm almost done. Shut up, Jacob. So I want to write on animation shows. So, like, I'm not worried about, like, the fame. I just want to do this for fun. For real. Sorry, I'm good at it. Anyways... I, I start losing my mind because I'm having like uh, visuals for the first time ever, right? And this girl next to me goes, no, I get it. And I'm like, okay, great. Like I can have a normal combo. And then she goes, have you ever watched Alice in Wonderland on mushrooms? Hear me out. I'm trying so hard not to be a fucking cunt. But I want to be like, oh my God, are you 12? So I, I'm, hear me out though. I'm on like really strong mushrooms. I'm having visuals for the first time ever and I've been tripping for 10 years Like I know my shit. I'm almost done. Shut up. Yeah, I'm about to leave. I okay. That's fine. Stop distracting me Anyways, she says that and I go take me home But to her I say yeah I think like once the first time I ever did mushrooms when I was 18 and then I'm like take me home I want to listen to father John Misty not Cal Scooby like please give me good music Please take me home and I did it. I love mushrooms. They're the best but yeah, it's nice to know I have visuals, but also I sell mushrooms, so come get me. Buy my mushrooms! Also, don't be shitty to me, because I have a backbone now, Jacob. All right, everybody. It's been a long time since I've had to do that, and it still is uncomfortable as I thought it was. Uh, all right, everybody. Um, Harlow, than you. Harlow, the problem is nobody laughed because you made them respect you so much they didn't want to laugh at you. Oh. It's hard to laugh at someone you respect. It's because it's a hobby and I already have a job. That's literally the bare minimum of being over 18, but that's all right. Uh, <laughs> that's a good joke. Um, all right, we're going to keep this thing moving, everybody. Your next comic... Um, Man, that is damning with faint praise, huh? <laughs> Everyone, put the scarlet letter on Kale. <laughs> All right, your next comic coming to the stage was just recently in D.C. with me on this uh, naughty, edgy show. I watched his set, and I just got to say, I watched the whole thing, and I, I think, these are just not the thoughts of a normal man, everybody. Put your hands together for the sick and twisted Zach Carpenter.
All right, hey, what's up, guys? I just got out of rehab myself. That was a pretty good reminder of why I don't do drugs anymore. Um, uh, yeah, I know I, people have probably spoke on it already, but I just want to say where I was on that fateful day when they tried to take down our boy, Donald J. Trump. I was in the most American place you could be when they tried to take down our boy. I was in a Hooters in Chester, Virginia. Me and the fellas were fucking upset. We felt like we were there. We were about to fucking take up arms and go up there. We were actually in each other's arms. We were upset. We were like, not, our, not 45. Not 45. But no, like I said, I was just in rehab, man. And uh, when you get there, they strip search you. And um, listen, I was kind of bummed out about that because it was pretty chilly in that facility. All right, look, so not only when I walk in there, they're like, they know I'm a junkie, but I didn't even get to fluff it up. So they didn't think I was packing either. You know what I'm saying? All right, check this out. There's no porn in rehab either. But you give yourself a few days of uh, not beating off, and then the Westminster Dog Show comes on. The Irish Setter is a beautiful animal. I don't care what anyone says. I wish I could set her on my cock. You know what I mean? Um, but it was it was in a beautiful place. You know, it was like on farmland. It was in this mansion. There was like fucking foxes and deer fucking bald eagles, and one 400-pound crackhead woman. It was unbelievable. I thought they only let hot people in there. I was like, oh my God, I think I'm in the wrong place. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, we were in there, we are talking about, it's kind of like sober college. You take classes every day. And in one particular class, we were talking about character defects. Um, one, of, one of the defects we were talking about was neglect. Uh, and some lady raised her hand and was like, I know all about neglect. I could write an entire book on it. I was like, really? A whole book? How about we start with a letter to your children? They miss you. Um, she was not a good mom. Uh, she abandoned her kids. Um, I do have one thing to say. I see doing stand-up, you're always in bars and breweries and stuff. And I'm jealous of people that can drink. Um, I'm jealous of people that can drink, because I can't drink like a normal person, all right? If I have one drink, just one single sip of alcohol, within a few days, I'll be walking around my apartment with a crack pipe and a Nerf gun, yelling at my dog, the British are coming, the British are coming! So, um, I'm looking for a job. And, uh... It's not easy. You know, they always tell you in job interviews to separate yourself from the competition. What makes you unique, Zach? What makes you unique? And that's when I lean in real closely. I look them dead in the eyes and I say, I know all the words to Rockstar by Nickelback. <laughs> Sets me apart. I'm just generally, I'm just not a stable person. You know what I mean? Um, I, uh, I just have some bad qualities. I'm kind of like a dog you can't leave alone uh, by itself. Except uh, you can't leave me alone in the house by myself because if you leave me alone for too long and then you come back, you'll come back to find all the bottles empty, a belt around my neck, and the ceiling fan on my chest. I'm unstable. Uh, suicide makes you tired. Suicide makes you tired, especially the way I do it. Um, the way I tried to do it was with cocaine and booze. Let me tell you something. It's kind of like killing yourself with cocaine and booze is like uh, going to an amusement park. You know, you're having a ton of fun on the rides or whatever, but then after enough lines, you're like, what the fuck is taking so long? Um, yeah, uh, I'll just leave you guys with this. Listen, having suicidal thoughts is kind of like, uh, it's really, it's exactly like having a piss in the movie theater, okay? Because, you know, you want to go, but uh, you don't want to miss anything that might be good. All right, thank you guys. I've been Zach Carpenter. Zach Carpenter, everybody. Another round of applause. That guy is crazy. Unfortunately, he's not crazy enough to compete with uh, the slow descent down the stairs. Uh, it is. Uh, 
So while just screaming me the clean off of opium, but you offered me coke. Um, all right, your next comic is not clean off of opium or coke or any other drugs. Your next comic is the sickest, most deranged, drug-addicted individual I know. In fact, after he touches his microphone, I'm gonna throw it away. And I let Harlow use this microphone, so what does that tell you? Everybody, put your hands together. I said put your hands together, Floyd! God damn it! For Tyler Bauer! Sick freak! <laughs> Somebody kill me, I'm a sick freak! Ah! Seriously though, home sweet home, stop asking me about the thing on my neck. It's a sore spot for me. Blame me off, Johnny. All right, seriously though, it is my twin brother that I absorbed in the womb. I was the more powerful brother, and now he's, to, he's trying to claw his way out through hell, through my neck. Guys, I'm a sick freak. <laughs> Do sperm banks have a no nut November bonus? Like if I don't uh, touch myself all November, if I don't harm myself, all November and I come in December 1st, do they give me a bonus? Do I get more money? Is it based off the viscosity? Is it by weight? <laughs> Take the load right off of me. Take a load off Annie. Guys, being a magician with an SNM kink would be hard. <laughs> that would really suck. You could just break out of the restraints easily. You wouldn't be able to come. You'd get a hefty amount from the sperm bank after that. By the way, who controls the sperm banks? I want to know. <laughs> Houdini never came. He had too much pride as a magician. Mind free! Chris Angel does come. He doesn't have any pride as a magician. That shit was all green screen bullshit. People say not to meet your heroes. What if my hero's my dad? I just want to meet him. Home sweet home. Uh, buckets and bags are the ultimate enemy of babies. They can't get enough of them. Uh, buckets and babies are like Israel and Palestinian babies. Seriously, the free Palestine. Uh, <laughs> uh, Israel saw free Palestine and they're like, ooh, free, don't mind if I do. I'm a sick freak with sick thoughts. Somebody kill me, somebody put me down. Um, here's another sick freaky thought for you. Don't uh, keep you up at night. I think more celebrities should go the route of like baseball players when they retire and open up a restaurant or a sports bar that's named after, their, uh, named after them. Like if R. Kelly ever gets out of jail, I think he should open up a pizzeria. That really silenced the bar. If R. Kelly ever got out of jail, I think he should open up a pizzeria at R. Kelly's Pizzeria. All the pizza is undercooked. They could have like a 72 part commercial called Trapped in the Walk-In. It has the same beat playing over every commercial, guys. Uh, and pizza places have been historically used for sex trafficking. It's on brand. Not a big conspiracy crowd, guys. Uh, I don't care who you say shot Trump. Han still shot first. <laughs> Guys, I'm legally obligated to make a joke about that as an open mic comic. Uh, we need to, here's another political stance. We need to defund RoboCop. <laughs> Guys got too much power. Uh, that's all I gotta say about that. Guys, um, I cry when I eat pussy like I'm chopping onions. <laughs> But if I put goggles on, I'm fine. Uh, 
uh, we know the disaster Pompeii, we know that volcano in Pompeii that exploded thousands of years ago. Uh, did you know uh, archaeologists uncovered casts of bodies from Pompeii and they found a guy that died masturbating? That's crazy, he went out like a G. Uh, I think it would be worse. I think it would be worse to be discovered in the ruins of Pompeii doing something racist. Like they uncover your body and you're just pointing at a different series of water fountains. <laughs> or they just find you like pulling your eyes really thin like you're doing it. You're doing that thing. Um, in his defense though, the volcano was really bright. He could have just been squinting. Guys, I've been Tyler Bauer. Y'all been a lovely crowd. Thank you so much. Hannah Baxter, your host, Jacob McFadden. Goodbye. sick and twisted. What a naughty comic, huh, Floyd? Naughty? Yeah, you don't like it, do you? You want to wash that boy, huh? Take him down to the river, make him clean. It's so hot. It's so naughty. It's so hot. Floyd knows what's up. These bugs are killing me. I want to buy a bug zapper for the bar, but I know they'll put a penis on it right away. I don't care for that. I'll put a penis on my bug zapper, motherfucker. All right, now that we got through that part, your next comic coming to the stage doesn't give a shit about the bugs. They also run the room in Ipanema, which is too low, like according to the sea level, for bugs to go in. Best promo I could give that place. All right, let's not build any applause or anything, guys. I mean, what are we doing? Yeah, there we go. Jacob McFadden, everybody. He knows exactly how far bugs can go. We love that about him. Hey, everybody. Best Ipanema host of all time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ayush, what's the deal with uh, straight guys wearing pink trucker hats all of a sudden? Like, are you virtue signaling or what? Like, that's crazy. I'm a trans woman, everybody. I, thank you, I love playing video games. I love playing NBA 2K. In NBA 2K, you can play as a WNBA team. I love playing NBA 2K as a WNBA team because that means I get to pass as a woman. <laughs> I, like, I like sports. I love sports. Uh, sports are fun. Sports are good. Um, I don't understand all the sports terminology that's applied to gay sex. I hope no one's in there. Hello? I don't like all the sports terminology that's, a, I like this mic stand over here actually, I think. Um, I don't like, you know what, actually, it's better, if, actually, you know what? <laughs> Sports terminology being applied to gay sex, it doesn't make sense to me. Sometimes people say, oh, that person's bisexual, they play for both teams. In what sport is that allowed? <laughs> right? Like, can you imagine Lakers call a timeout and LeBron James all of a sudden is like, you know what? That team over there, they got some good looking players. They got some interesting forms of penetration. I think I'm gonna go play for that other team for a minute. That, his first team, the Lakers would be like, no, fuck you. You cannot play for that. If you play for this other team, you're dead to us. You go over, try and play for the other team. It's like, hey, uh, I'd like to play for this team. What do you think? It's like, no, 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 no. We just saw you playing with that other team. I don't think it's gonna be, it's a, it's a no for me. Get it, cause Mark Cuban, sharks, whatever. Um, <laughs> So then LeBron James would go back to his bench and be like, hey, the other team didn't want to play with me. I'm back to this team. They'd be like, you're a free agent now. Uh, actually, that's a pretty good representation of being bisexual. Uh, now that I think about it. I have been experiencing phantom pains for my penis. But I still have my penis. So, what I'm trying to say is my penis burns all the time? 
in which my doctor tells me uh, it means somebody's talking about me during sex. I'm real pissed off. I'm real pissed off, home sweet home. No. Why are you pissed off? Thank you. Why? The word multi-hyphenate only has one hyphen. <laughs> it fucking pisses me off. I hate English. Um, I've been hanging out a lot in my above-ground basement with my uh, imaginary friend's state representative. I'm just like, we need UBI, we need UBI. He's like, no, you need cranberry juice. <laughs> That's the best that bit has gone. That's great. That is great. Um, I saw uh, a suicide prevention poster in a bathroom earlier at a bar. I was like, that's a good place for it. Um, I saw the suicide prevention poster and I thought, I really should catch up with them. <laughs> Anybody else call the suicide hotline so much you're becoming a little bit of a Karen about it? <laughs> like, if you can't convince me not to kill myself, I need you to put me on the phone with somebody who can. <laughs> That's my time, everybody. Please bring back up your host, Jacob McFadden. Florence, everybody, go to Florence. Uh, your next comic coming to the stage, Ha Cha Cha. This guy's been doing it longer than me. Aside from all of the breaks from doing comedy, he's been doing it longer than me. I first met this comic when he was too young to be in a bar and had to be supervised to do his set super early in the show. That's true. Everybody, put your hands together for the deliciously 17 in my mind, Brian Mann. of my life keeping my body in shape for when Jacob McFadden gets tired of his children and his wife and decides to dump a big plunger into my toilet bowl. Hey, yeah, buddy. This guy's been recording it, too. I don't know, guys. What's up? I'm Brian. I'm depressed. <laughs> I'm a comedian. We're out here. We're out here. We all know who should have taken the shot this past Saturday. That's Watto. Yeah, I, I hear a fellow Watto hater in the background. Yes. You know the chant, right? Watto sucks. Watto sucks. Come on, Roz. Watto does suck. Watto's a bad guy. These guys are looking at me amazed. I know you guys went to school every morning carrying your Watto lunchboxes, being like, I love the Phantom Menace. What if he was a Phantom? Yeah. Dennis? Is that your name? <laughs> me? Me? Out of all of us? <laughs> His reaction spoke miles. Is that a phrase? Is that a phrase? Jesus, y'all. <sighs> Let's get topical. Y'all remember that movie Elvis? Austin Butler, he got stuck. <laughs> what if he had started his career with that same method acting mentality and gotten like a background role in Star Wars? And it's like an interview with him and he's like, Please, please tell my, tell my agent to give me a regular role. He can't fuck without saying You gotta play to the camera, open micers. It really opens the mic so much. What kind of mic you got on there, Silver? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a guy that likes to keep his industry secrets quiet. Just like Watto! 
classic human trafficker. You're familiar with it? What are y'all doing here? I don't mean to be like, are y'all all right? Okay. What, what do y'all pay for rent? Collectively, I assume y'all live together. Oh, uh, three raspberries. Yes, yeah, three raspberries. Y'all... Y'all down for an extra raspberry? I know where to find some bushes. You guys ever go to a public park and try to get a Mother's Day gift? You go down on a stranger? It's your mother. All right, all right we can cut that joke. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, I know. I was thinking about riffing on the Star Wars thing I was talking about longer. It didn't last this long. I've been going to therapy. You guys will appreciate that. Last time I was here, I shouted at a person. Felt bad about that. Silver showed me the footage. It was pretty funny. I should be angrier more often. Somebody, just try to make me angry. Try. This guy. <laughs> oh, fuck, man. The guy threw his middle finger up at me. Oh, you fucked out. Oh, 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 you, you look like Steve Zahn. <laughs> Got his ass. What's up, man? You look like Steve Zahn if you had a camera. <laughs> yeah, got your ass. What do you do for a living? Uh, engineer. Wow, Steve Zahn, engineer. <laughs> yeah. See Jacob doing the same thing Matthew McConaughey did to Steve Zahn on the set of the movie Mud. <laughs> Holding up an index card. <laughs> Index, index, index. <laughs> hmm. All right. I like this. Good night, everybody. The hell, we keep getting older, and they index the same, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right, let's <laughs> take silver. All right, we're, uh, we're getting down to the final few comics of the show, but boy, do we have some heavy hitters coming up here. Uh, but first, your next comedian, this is his first time here, everybody. I want you to give him a round of applause. Again, Chris, I, I swear to God, I don't know if there would have been a better spot to put you up tonight. Sometimes you just have bad nights. You like, uh, you know, you... Oh, yeah, it was Brian's fault. Brian's taking blame. Uh, said Brian looks like he should work at a food court in the mall. Like he looks like he's giving samples of legendary potato out. <laughs> All right, now he's doing. I know, yeah, and he's just doing the pussy eating thing to my face. I don't, I don't. Uh, you know what? My wife is right. That's not alluring, and I shouldn't do that anymore. That's that's actually her. It's horrific when it's done to you. I don't like it at all. This sucks. Anyways, uh, I, your next comic would never make crude gestures to people. Uh, everybody, put your hands together for Chris Newcomb. Hey, how's everybody doing? My name is Steve Zahn, apparently. I don't know who the fuck that is, but... <laughs> um, anybody know what that means? I've been trying to figure that out. I think it's, I just hit myself twice for world peace. <laughs> My name is Reverend Christopher Arrington Newcomb. It's true, I used to be a pastor. So everybody's thinking, the atheist is going, ah, oh, fuck, got an idiot here. The agnostic is going, well, maybe give him a chance. Nah, fuck it. Hindus are going, consider Shiva, she has eight arms. Buddhists are going, hey, hey, why don't you just uh, meditate about your delusions? And the Satanist is going, kill him in the parking lot. So one day I was at Hooters, right? Hanging out. I go to the bathroom. We're watching wrestling for five bucks with my friends. I go to the bathroom. I come out. There's a drunk Hooters waitress in front of me. Completely trashed. 
She's yelling, this is a true story. Does anybody know the fucking Ten Commandments? I'm standing behind her, I'm thinking, I have a master's in theology, I might be able to help you with that. She turns around, do you know the fucking Ten Commandments? I go, uh, yeah. What are they? So I start listing them off. I choke at like number four. She goes, that's not the fucking Ten Commandments. Sloth, greed. I'm like, those are the seven deadly sins. Fuck you. Turns around. Does anybody know the fucking Ten Commandments? And then the Christians go, you go to Hooters to hang out with the pagans or going to hell. So I couldn't do that. I couldn't preach that sermon, but it was a true story. So you say, hey, you're, you're a pastor. How did that work? You must have grown up in church a little bit. I had some interesting friends as a kid. One friend, name was William, had two parents, which most people do, but they shared something. Mom, completely blind. Dad, completely blind. Mom, legally blind. So one day, we're upstairs. We're in seventh grade. My friend has Miss July on the floor. And I'm standing there, sitting actually, gazing. And the father comes upstairs. His dad was really loud. <laughs> William! I'm looking down, there's Miss July. His blind dad walks up and stands on Miss July. I'm looking over at my friend and I'm looking at Miss July back and forth and my friend goes, he's blind. Mouths the words, he's blind. And he goes, sure dad, yeah, we'll be home in time for dinner. <laughs> and I'm going, this is simultaneously the coolest house to live in and the most fucked up one at the same time. A Couple days later, I go over, he goes, hey, wanna go get a porno? Uh, okay. Hey, Mom, can we have the porn card? She gives it to us. We go over. We get it. Go in the back room. Some weird guy there. Make our selection. Come back. Sitting in the room, listening, watching, said activities. <laughs> William! It's too loud. Go in the living room. So we go in the living room. Watching this movie. And I'm going, this is simultaneously the coolest house to live in and the most sick at the same time. So how did I become a pastor? I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. But I do know, I like words. There's a lot of words in the Bible. But I like words that are different backwards, like Tums, Tums is smut backwards. Uh, boob is boo backwards, because there's two of them. <laughs> I thought hard on that one. <laughs> but I also thought, because I'm a singer-songwriter too, what would it be like if you took song titles and did, them, did the opposite? Like, what if Cardi B actually doesn't have a WAP? It's a paw? <laughs> or what if, um, I just forgot what it was. I'm gonna open my phone and look. <laughs> Having long hair is not good when you didn't do it for the thing. There we go, okay. Uh, what if um, I didn't actually touch myself? No, uh, you guys are too young. I'm Gen X. Do you know that song? Divinals? Uh, I touch myself? Anybody? Anybody? All right. Okay. So I have narcolepsy. And uh, so I fall asleep randomly. Haven't driven in three years. And uh, one day I'm in my studio. I'm sitting there. I got my Les Paul across my, my uh, lap. And I fall asleep. And I must have gone like that. And the Les Paul went <laughs> in my head. And blood starts pouring down. I'm like, this is so rock and roll but so not rock and roll all at the same time. I fall asleep again, I wake up in the drum set, I'm like, this is bottom, but not. That's my time, my name is Chris. Chris Newcomb, everybody. Chris Newcomb's right, I'm old enough that uh, I do remember hearing that Divinal song for the first time and jerking off to it. Uh, we had a 56K modem, which was not as good as you think it is. Also, one time Molly Shannon did that bit where she's 50 years old, but she was in a diaper and just a diaper and her legs were showing. And I was like, all right, I'm going to lay behind the couch with a condom on. That's happening. Uh, things were weird in the aughts, guys. They took me on the towers and we didn't know how to jerk off anymore. Also, Justin Baber's such a big dude. He bent my mic stand. Uh, all right, here we go. Your next comic. This guy is running uh, an anniversary show. He's got an anniversary show for his show tomorrow night uh, at Basic City Comedy Company. Now they put it on Facebook and said that we've invited all of our favorite comics who we think do the best and fit this room the best. And uh, I'll be home. Um, 
That's absolutely cool. I mean, there's not like the highlight reels of me making Brian Fontaine try to kill himself, but that's fine. Uh, I, you know, I agree. There's a show, a show where people, um, you know, make other people upset about their sets. I, I'm bad at that, so I can see why I'm not on it. It's all good. All good. The guy hasn't asked me for a ride home in two years, but if he did now, I'd do it, but I would drive home thinking like, what an asshole. Uh, all right, everybody, put your hands together for the host of Basic City Comedy, uh, Monty Giles. Uh, Jacob, Jacob, spend time with your family, stupid. Stop trying to come to open mics. Like, you, this is an obligation. Go be with your kid. It is an obligation. Honestly, no, actually, do you want to be on the show tomorrow? Okay, sick. Jacob's on the show tomorrow. Only because I am jealous of your son after I met him. He's so much more capable than I was. Also, I, 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 Jacob brought his kid to my cookout, right? And it was a beautiful moment that I captured on my camera of him and his son holding a sparkler for like the first time. Beautiful. And then that was a moment I wish that I was still drinking because I was like, I, I would have hit it and then just left the developed footage like outside of his house with his kid's eyes scratched out. <laughs> And the mouth cut out of Jacob's mouth. But no, I'm gonna no, I'm gonna get a frame for you. Actually, it's gonna be. It almost made me cry. It was so beautiful. Uh, I, I, I have the video, and it's just my wife yelling, "Stop! He shouldn't run! Stop!" <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 the funniest thing about that was watching comics try to be normal people in front of a kid. <laughs> like they're all like, "Oh yeah, buddy," while doing coke on my porch. <laughs> It was so disappointing. I like to learn new things. I try to learn a new, a new thing every day. Uh, I learned today that the NAACP doesn't stand for the National Association of Cum Protectors. I know, I totally thought that it was like an org who like wanted to keep cum safe, you know? They just had to keep the goo good. And it's like, and like, you could, like National Association of Colored People, what do you call it, NAACP? What? What? Like the National Association of Cum Colored Protectors. Like you're only protecting black goop. The creature from the Black Lagoon, that's what they all call them, the people who got there and protected. I don't know. I like how dumb I am though. Like everyone has to be cool with how dumb they are. I think it's a very good, it's a growing moment. You know, I don't need to know shit. Like the shit that I don't know, it's magic to me. And I think that's cool. It's like I don't give a fuck about magnets and doors and hinges and all that shit. I just need to know when I go to a CVS and do this in front of the door, it opens and that's fucking fire. When's the last time you did that? I don't know. Wait, you're using your feet like an adult? Fuck that, dude. Put some wonder, put some wonder in your life. Next time you're having a bad day, just go there. You'll feel like a bad bitch, I swear to God. But no, I don't need to know how like my bidet works, you know? I just need to know that whenever I sit on it and use it, I come. That's, that's all I need from that. God, this page is fucked. Uh, I thought about it. I think that racists uh, need to put up their game a little bit. You know, like if you're gonna be a lifetime racist, just like commit. Like, why are there any racist people who learn Spanish to be like more like accurately racist to Mexicans? You know, like like they're so racist. They're like, I don't want anything lost in translation. I'm saying this in ustedes. Uh, I'm going to therapy to uh, work on conflict. I'm trying to work on conflict. And my therapist, like, I'll talk about an issue I'm having with someone, and they're like, yo, just go talk to them. And I'm like, all right. And that makes it easier, because I'm terrible at starting, like, real conversations with people. So, like, ever since that, I've been going to them and being like, my therapist thinks I need to talk to you. And then I'll go back to my therapist, and I'm like, yo, I told them we needed to talk, and we came to the agreement that you need to mind your own fucking business. Like literally, they, they booked an appointment with you next week to tell you to fuck off. Cool. Uh, I think that men should treat themselves more. I think we we haven't been taking enough in this country. I think that we all. I think we need to. We need to score the. I think we need to get to the final frontier of sex. You know what I'm saying? I think men need to demand that their piss hole gets eaten out. I think that is the final frontier. Thank you. Hell yeah. I just imagine how, because it's already sounding. It's like, how do we skip step A before we got to the end of the alphabet? But whatever. But it's like, imagine, I just want someone to spread my dick lips just so lovingly. You know what I'm saying? Like they're trying to blow out the smallest candle. Just. 
Like a clown learning how to make balloon animals for the first time, you know what I'm saying? Cool. Uh, I'm trying to stop crying as much. I, I think I cry a lot, so I'm trying to trick myself out of crying. And as a comic, I'm like, yo, I can do that by like playing really sad music while I'm crying. <laughs> and then I hope my comic brain turns on and is like, isn't this too much? Like, have you ever looked at a mirror while you're crying and like your real self is in the back of your head and you say something to try to like grapple it, but it comes out to like, what are you doing right now? But like, I'll play sad music. Like, last time I cried, I tried playing Runaway Love by, Mary, by Ludacris and Mary J. Blige. I'm sorry, you're coming in a weird time. I'm sorry about that. That's all good. Sir, have you ever had your piss hole eaten? Your piss hole? Yeah. No, not your dick suck. That's amateur hour. I'm talking, someone takes your little, your little Homer Simpson and just spreads it and just, you know? Like you're trying to get sour cream off the tiniest taco. Like just. Brother, treat yourself, I'm telling you. Just give it a little kiss, eh? All right, that's been my time. This is Monty Giles. I run a big city comedy uh, with my best friend, Tyler Bauer, right over there. It's our three-year anniversary tomorrow. Come check it out. Get over Jacob McFadden. He's going to be on it. Yeah. Now Monty's dropped by Mike drunk and sober. That's fun. Oh, boy. Uh, that's uh, Monty Giles, everybody. Make sure you go check out his show at Basic City Comedy in Manchester tomorrow. Uh, I'm on it now, I guess. Um, I am so happy, and you guys can go back in Silver's archive and look. Monty's in a relationship now, and just week after week, he's just dressing more and more like the Fresh Prince, and I appreciate that. Uh, all right, your next comedian was born and raised in West Montana. He's here now to tell us how real men do being gay in the city. Put your hands together for Kale Moore. That's the name of the sitcom I just pitched to ABC, being gay in the city. Um, I, <laughs> I just want to point out that a guy walked up here with a PBR and a White Claw, drank both and then left again in about five minutes. That was impressive. Um, Chris and, and uh, Jacob were having a conversation. Chris, I just wanted to point out, I think the, the thing people were thinking of, when you came up and you said you were a, a, a former pastor, I don't think the first thing people thought was, why is there a religious guy at an open mic? I think their first thought was, why is he a former pastor? <laughs> What happened? <laughs> Look, I'm not saying it's that. I know what you're thinking. I'm not saying it's that. My former pastor was an alcoholic. So there's other routes to go. <laughs> uh, I find it kind of funny that Brian was talking about the Phantom Menace for his entire set. Uh, because I recently, um, you know, I'm, I'm in a committed relationship for the first time in a while. And I did the duty of every straight man. I showed them the first six Star Wars movies. And their favorite character in the, in the whole series, I think, was Darth Maul. Because Darth Maul is the only non-binary character in the Star Wars movies. Throughout the entire movie, he, the, Darth Maul is only referred to as it and its. And it could be because, you know, they just didn't know the nature of this, like, evil monster that was coming after them. I would like to think that Qui-Gon Jinn used his force powers to learn Darth Maul's pronouns. I also think they liked Darth Maul because Darth Maul, like all nine binary people, is brimming with rage. Yeah. I I just heard the word cock. That was the last. <laughs> um, guys, Donald Trump got shot. What? Have you seen Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? 
Uh, <laughs> now, I'm not going to get really deep into it. I'm just going to say one thing. If history has taught us anything, Suge Knight is behind this. And I really hope that Suge Knight dangles Biden over a balcony until he agrees to drop out of the race. I've been learning a lot about political crises recently, actually, because, like, my family took a trip to Philly recently, and we saw, like, where the first Congress meant. And um, the, the guy had a fun fact. He said the very first immigration crisis, I know cri uh, immigration's a big hot-button issue right now, the very first immigration crisis was in the 1790s, and it was about whether we should let French people into our country. And I don't want to sound xenophobic, but I feel like it would have been better off if we didn't. We would have had a lot less mimes running around. Uh, I will say it could be worse. Like, we were pretty lucky that not a lot of French people wanted to come over here. Because you, could you imagine if there was a little France in every single major city? Like, yeah, you know, everybody would be wearing striped shirts. They'd eat nothing but various breads. And you could spot it from anywhere in the city because there'd be a column of smoke from them just chain smoking terrible cigarettes. And the worst part is every time you would drive into little France, a mime would come up to your car and it'd be like, <laughs> yeah, speaking of a uh, you know, political scandal, um, my sticker company, they sent out a public email to all their clients saying that they supported Trump right after the shooting. Which is a weird stance for a company that makes shitty stickers to come out with. Um, but I, I should have seen the red flags, because every time I got an order from them, it came with a free dose of ivermectin. But right-wing people, they take the stance on the weirdest shit. Like, did anybody see a few months ago when Sidney Sweeney got photographed at an award show with, like, a low-cut dress? And every right-winger was like, take that, liberals! It's like, what? You think liberals don't like big tits? No. Yeah. Come on, man! Yeah. <laughs> Look, I, I don't know why I have to say this, but men, women are not your political battlegrounds, okay? There is only one respectful way to react to a woman with big boobs. It's to go, awooga! <laughs> and then politely walk away. <laughs> That's my time. I've been Kale Moore. Thank you. More everybody. In a in a better bar, he would have got a round of applause when he said, "Women aren't your battlegrounds." Oh man, uh, we're gonna keep this thing moving. Um, what a night we've had. But by the way, was that Sticker Mule? Did Sticker Mule do that? Okay, yeah. I someone someone earlier today on Facebook was like, "Hey, where should I get stickers?" So I was like, "Sticker Mule's great." And then everyone started shitting on me, and I was like, "What happened?" I don't know what happened. They're just very cheap, and they deliver them quickly. So now I know. All right. Uh, your next comic is the CEO of Sticker Mule, everybody. Put your hands together for Mr. Ayush. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, up next, we're going we're gonna to be rolling out Vincent Van Gogh stickers. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, this presidential race is really a joke. We do have Vincent Van Gogh versus a fucking 97-year-old kneecap, and I don't know who to vote for. I mean, fucking Kanye at this point. Actually, scratch that. I'm voting for Ray J. It's the comeback after the comeback, if you know what I'm saying. If you know what I'm saying. I, uh, I had jokes, and then I saw Harlow, and then my brain immediately started to come up with roasts just because I'm an asshole like that. Um, but I'm scared of them and a pussy, so we're not going to say anything because they have a backbone now, in case you guys haven't figured that out. Uh, you know, I, uh, 
Growing up Indian, I only had a few career choices that I could follow. I could either be a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer. I was in high school theater at the time. I said, Dad, I want to be an actor. He said, no, son, it's pronounced doctor. I said, Dad, I want to be a comedian. He said, you're already a professional dumbass. And I, I, yeah, I felt like he wasn't listening to me, so I wanted to throw him a curveball. I said, Dad, I want to be a male stripper. He said, Beta, you don't have the build for that. You don't, you don't have the body. And he was, he, I mean, he's right. He was like, nobody wants to see, uh, people want to see Magic Mike. They don't want to see Magic Mukesh. And I was like, oh, fuck, Magic Mukesh. Magic Mukesh, and then I was like, Magic Mukesh, baby, <laughs> baby. As soon as I learn how to throw ass, I can no longer tell that joke. So, so uh, I don't know, I don't know. We're practicing, we're practicing. I, uh, I recently had to go through anti-discrimination training at my corporate job. And it's always interesting, because in the videos, it's never, a person of color insulting a person of color. It's always some dumbass white dude like named Rob and he's like, oh, oh, Sanjeet, did you eat curry for breakfast today? And I feel like anti-discrimination laws were created by white men to tell white men that, hey, you gotta work, you, you, I know you might not like it, but you have to work with people of color now. And they're like, oh, really? Oh, but I still don't like them. And then, you know, that's how it is. That's how it is. I forgot the punchline to that, and that fucks, uh, that fucking sucks. That fucking sucks, but that's okay. We move, baby, we move. I, uh, I went to my first drag show this past weekend. It was fucking, it was fucking sick. I went to my first drag show, and then after the drag show ended, I went to my first gay club and proceeded to go uh, to my second drag show. Um, and shit. Yeah, and this is all to let you guys know that I'm on my track to being a lesbian. You know how like Buddhists have their seven steps to Nirvana? <laughs> I'm on like I, I know, I know, I know, I don't know, but I'm on like step six of seven to becoming a lesbian, right? I got, I went to the gay club, I got humped by a lesbian in the butt, in the middle of, in the middle of a dance circle, and then after that, I got hit on by a gay man, and he said, do you have a nice body, poppy? And I said, thank you, sir. And then he said, can I touch it? And I said, I mean, fuck yeah, bro. And then I got knighted by a lesbian as a lesbian, which I feel like that counts as two steps. So at this point, I'm ready to buy a Subaru. I know everything about cars, and I'm gonna start a welding job soon. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, I don't have anything else for you guys. I appreciate it. My name is Ayush. Have a good night, everybody. That's Ayush, everybody. People usually wait to start doing the uh, sort of celebratory handshakes until the host comes and relieves them, but that's cool. That wasn't awkward for us at all. Uh, all right, your next comic I, is often the court, is, is, is why I wake up the day after these and usually feel bad, because I'm like, did I just spend 40 minutes telling her to have kids again? I shouldn't do that anymore. But, you know what? You guys make beautiful babies. And you should do it. They're gonna be great kids. You guys would be great parents. The, poli the politics would be wrong, but you'd be great parents. And um, send them to my homeschool program. I'll fix them. Uh, all right, everybody. Your next comic coming to the stage wishes she squeezed the trigger herself. Put your hands together for the Emma Goldman of Richmond Comedy, Kate Carroll. Um, no, I, uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, Beautiful children. 
Yeah, I know, they'd be fucking hot as shit. Uh, and they're gonna rule the world, too. An Appalachian with a fucking gay, like, Californian? What are you, like, what? Yeah, of course, of course they're gonna rule the world. They call that J.D. Vance. <laughs> oh, shit. The uh, difference is not, I'm not a crackhead. Um, <laughs> Jesus. No, I, uh, I, when I was growing up, I, I really badly, I like, I wanted really badly to be a vampire. Um, I know that's not super surprising. I say that, like, I know that I'm wearing color right now, but traditionally my garb is uh, all black and uh, I tend to uh, wear a lot of dark clothing. Growing up, I was a full blown goth. So, like, if you saw me when I was a teenager, you'd be like, yeah, that makes sense that a girl like that would want to be a vampire. Because I was like, I want to live forever. I want to do all the things. Like, blood doesn't really scare me that much. And also, like, it makes me hot, right? Um, and then I realized that I all... Really, what I, I had was an iron deficiency, FOMO, and, like, you know, no other colors I felt comfortable wearing. So, like... But then also I grew up and I realized that like, wait, hold on, uh, vampires actually do exist and they are so much less cool than we thought they were. <laughs> I think you all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh shit. I didn't say it. Uh, yeah, we call that we call that an emotional vampire, and uh, uh, it's a thing, and it's always that boss that you hate that corners you for an hour uh, right when work is about to end, and they tell you about their painful divorce uh, that probably involved cheating. Not really sure who cheated, but someone cheated. Uh, maybe a dog died somewhere in there, and um, uh, <laughs> yeah, basically they're just trying to steal your life force. Um, I, I used to joke that like uh, emotional vampires were, were like the opposite of sociopaths and that sociopaths don't have feelings and they don't want them and emotional vampires uh, don't have enough feelings and they want yours so they will s take them from you no matter how or why whether or not you want to give them they will take them Ugh, um, I don't know uh, <laughs> I had a joke I was working on for a while about um uh, I'm just gonna get into it. Who remembers <laughs> Reagan getting shot? <laughs> yeah. I do. Yeah, because we're all so old. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't. Actually. No, exactly. Right. So, uh, does anyone remember? You might not remember Reagan getting shot, but do you know why Reagan you know got shot? Yeah. Oh, why did Reagan get shot? John Jr. was in love with the. Uh, I'm, I'm so. I'm no, Jodie Foster. 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 Yes, correct. So yes. Yes. That means you remember when John Legend. Uh, I, 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 not part of my joke, but thank you. We can talk about it later. Um, no. So yes, you're right. Actually, the whole reason uh, John Hinckley shot Reagan was he was trying to impress Jodie Foster. The irony being that Jodie Foster later turned out to be gay. And I have been obsessed with this concept. <laughs> if John Hinckley was trying to impress Jodie Foster. Who was this guy trying to impress? Jojo Siwa? <laughs> like, like how, how did we get here? <laughs> do we, also, I, I'm really tired of hearing this, like, that photo goes hard. No, it fucking doesn't. No, and no, 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 and I'll tell you exactly why. I'll tell you exactly why. Say you as a, a person who has just given a speech in a room full of people, just got shot at from a direction that you're not sure of where the bullet came from, would you not want to get the fuck out of there immediately? Uh, mm, this is not a question and answer portion, sir. The question is yes, you would. A smart person would because they would know that their life was potentially on the line. Instead, this guy literally was like, oh wait, uh, it's probably not that big of a deal. Let me stand here and get a fucking photo of and potentially get my head blown off twice. Does that not kind of stand out to anyone as being potentially idiotic? It's pretty fucking hard though. Right. You know what, actually, that's a very good point. In the sense, in the sense, that we typically consider hard 
as being people willing to literally do the dumbest fucking thing ever for no real reason. So yes, you're right. In that sense, that photo does go hard. I, I did, and I saw, and I, and, and I, this is not my joke, but I did want to say it because literally I've never seen a better tweet that someone literally said when Trump got shot at and got injured and they were rushing him off the stage, he insisted he was able to run back on stage to save his shoes. Truly the first gay president. Uh, again, not my joke. I just thought it was important to mention. Um, but yeah, no, uh, but I, I, I will, I will leave you with this. Um, uh, one of, I know I mentioned Jodie Foster and, and, and John Hinckley earlier. One of the things that I find, uh, so ironic about the way that our rhetoric currently is when we're talking about conservatives, like the conservative rhetoric oftentimes, especially when you're talking like really deeply Christian conservatives, they believe that you can convert people from being gay to being straight, which makes me wonder if John Hinckley had just been a better shot, do you think Jodie Foster would have ended up straight? <laughs> I would hope not. <laughs> but it's worth a, you know, it's worth a thought experiment. And uh, frankly, I think if we could go back in time and replay that, I, I wouldn't say no to it. Um, <laughs> All right, guys, I'm Kate. Thank you so much. I'm just gonna be clear, I would not say your kids would be hot as shit. Uh, hey, I used to think pedophilia was funny before I was a parent. But now I'm like, it's it's funny when we're not being recorded. It's not my fault you don't have any foresight in the future. Uh, no, uh, well, no, I have two boys, so I've got a lot of foreskin. Uh, That's a homophone. Uh, all right, we're ready to keep moving on. Uh, <laughs> My favorite, Kate, okay, you'll appreciate it. My favorite thing is Politico. I don't know if you saw this. Politico had a headline out like an hour after Trump was shot saying, Will getting shot be Trump's newest appeal to black voters? <laughs> and then Twitter dogpiled them and they deleted it within 20 minutes. But it's still all over the internet. Go look for that. It's like, hey. Believe, believe it or not, there are no, it was Politico. <laughs> You know what? If there's a 50 Cent was very popular when I was a kid. That nigga Trump, that nigga Trump blasting me. Yeah, he also made really good music. Most Trump makers was good. America. I don't know if you've heard the slogan, but he made America great. So, all right. Anyways, wow. Uh, <laughs> it's. I love Kate. I love. I love Kate. <laughs> He did get shot in the head. I mean, we give him a little grace. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. The, ear. the ear is part of your head. I hate to tell you this. I just feel like if you touch your ear, you're also touching your head. I'm uh, I'm old school in that way. Except that the eyeball is literally feet away from the dick, and the ear is millimeters away from the head. Rulers. Rulers and tape measures, so to say. All right, this is going off the rails. I get it. He's a bad guy, and when he gets shot in the head, it's, it's, uh, there's no sympathy. I agree, kill all politicians, but when it happens, we have to pretend to be sad, or else the FBI comes around. All right, your next comic. Your next comic, uh, Honestly, the former president just appealed to him by getting shot. Uh, put your hands together for Politico's preferred demographic, Damian Anderson. That nigga really was in a room listening to many men have said that. I, like, I, I actually believe that. But... How is everybody's week been? My week has been fucking awful, guys. Uh, my phone has been fucking broken for like a week. I just got it fixed, it's fine. My phone has been fixed, but it's like that week was ass. I don't know. You remember like 
our parents, I'm a millennial, I was born in 96. You remember our parents being like, because I remember a time before phones, but our parents, when we got phones, our parents were like, you own your phone too much and all that bullshit. And like, I spent like time without a phone. Nah, that shit's ass. Like, fuck, fuck that shit. I'm never doing that again. I was working my blue collar job, going to and coming home from work like a white man from the 2000s listening to rock and roll radio. I, and then I would get home. No, I would be at work actually. I'd be at work and then I would try and sing what I would like to call modern day like slave hymns. And I'd just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my white coworkers would be like, because I'm the only nigga in the office, so they'd be like looking at me crazy, like, what are you doing? And it'd be like, white people just don't get it. And then I'd be like, damn, that sucks, uh, that's crazy. <laughs> but then after, and then after that, I'd get home. i get home, you know, i play video games because I can't contact my friends that are all at open mics doing their things. <laughs> and i play video, single player video games because my parents don't want to play for Xbox Live. And then I'd be like, in the middle of playing those video games, I'd be like, I want to jerk off, as normal people would do. But then I'd be like, oh wait, I don't have my phone. But wait, there's more. I can't, there's no family laptop because I live in a Haitian family that doesn't like computers. But wait, there's more. <laughs> then I'd be like, wait, PlayStation doesn't put internet browsers on PlayStation 5s. So I can't jerk, Ooh, all right. Niggas and ladies with dicks. When was the last time you had to earn a nut is what I'm trying to get at. When would you, like, earn a nut with no porn, no nut, your thoughts, your pure thoughts? I had to, I had to. I realized, you know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not that much of a bad person because I thought of the lady that works at Wawa, that near my job, that fucking makes my sandwich just fucking right. And then I'd be like, you know what, she's a nice lady. I'm just gonna think about her. But I remember, I'm only saying this because humanity has lasted too long. We, porn has gone too far. I don't know. Porn is, I don't know. Guys, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? Cause like, porn is about fantasies and unrealistic situations. And even in those unrealistic situations, guys are unreasonably creepy. There's genres that are based off of being unreasonably creepy. Guys have to like, in these genres, there's genres of porn where like you bribe women for sex. And I'm like, even in your fantasies, you don't have enough riz or confidence enough to like make this woman have a one night stand with you. Like, I don't know, like, maybe you should, guys, I'm just saying there's snuff porn out there. Like we should kill ourselves after that. I don't know, that's just me. That's just me. I don't know. I'm just saying that because I'm a guy and being a cis guy is weird and or as a black guy that lived, grew up in Richmond, being a cis guy is weird now. Because having a crush is weird now, because it's like, you know, you show up to the bars with your boys and you're like chilling and you're like, ah. Uh. And then some nigga like steps on your shoe. This is a black guy problem. But <laughs> some guy steps on your shoe and then you're like, well, I have to beat his ass, all right. Well, and then you get in this room, you're like, what's up, nigga? What's up, bro? What's up? Like, we can take this outside. What's up? Like, that dead ass. Like, and then after that, off, after all that, after all that, you're just sitting there like, you see your, your crush walks in with your boys, and then you look at your boys and you're like, guys, you guys think she liked my shirt? <laughs> Do you guys, 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 do you guys think that, do you guys think when she smelled a hint of my cologne that she just imagined us with a family and she imagined us with three kids, each of them named Perel, Steve, and Charmel? Those aren't specific situations. I'm a man, I don't think about that. 
I'm a man. I think about, I think about holding my feelings in and then holding them in till the end. No, I don't know. Oh, Jacob's back. How you doing, dude? Did you know your son like got scared when I said hi to him at Monty's party? Yes. Did you talk to him about that? Yeah. I said good thinking. As you should. Go to the other side of the street. That's exactly what I said. I taught him the N-word. I didn't tell Jacob that. But if I didn't say me, that's my advice. I didn't feel like that was too racist until we tried to do the hand thing at the end. And I was like, oh my God, something's going wrong. <laughs> Something happened. I'm being proven as a fraud. <sighs> I grew up on food stamps. It's cool. I can teach my son the N-word. All right. I expected someone to sign off on that. It was Clinton. I expected Clinton to sign off on that. All right. We're down to our final two comics. But boy, oh boy, do we have some great comics to end the show with, everybody. Your next comic has assumed that they were next like five times already. <laughs> and, and I feel bad about that. But they are finally here now. Now that all of the, uh, oh, sorry, that's Damien's time. Let me stop that. Uh, now, that all of the, now that all of the disruptors have left, hey, Kale, you want to suck face back at the apartment and not here in the bar? What the fuck is that? What are you, chewing on his ear? That's weird. I agree. Come on, do a little performance for everybody. All right, I agree. It's too, uh, all right. Anyways, your next comic uh, is going to sexually bully Kale uh, and his partner. Everybody put your hands together for Sabet. Yay! I'm so excited and so happy to be here. Um, I may or may not look like it right now, but I definitely am a creep. Um, oh, oh my god, I dropped my pen. Um, I really feel like, you know, all my friends here are gay, and I'm jealous. Uh, I wish I were cool too, but I'm like so into dicks that like this turns me on. This isn't even a joke. Some of you guys might think this is too big and uh, sort of weirdly shaped to be a good dick, but it's great. And... Just imagine, like, you guys think that it's so hard being guys because you can get, like, like hard in public and stuff and whatever, but, like, it's actually worse to not get hard in public because you have no reason to excuse yourself. I'm just, like, horny at work, like, not paying attention to what people are saying to me, just, like, giving everybody slushies because I'm, like, have this thing going on in my head that I'm, like, so in love with my coworker, you know, like, fantasizing about, like, making out behind the trash can or something. Um... I, you know, people talk about porn. Um, I don't watch porn. I watch um, kissing scenes on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like that easy to get off. I, I used to, my go-to porn to watch in high school was Jim and Pam's first kiss on The Office. Yeah. And I would come immediately. I also thought that um, coming was always upon entry. You know, like that both people, like I thought sex was all just like, like they do in the movies, like Bella and Vampire. And like, I also used to watch a bunch of Twilight and masturbate to that. Um, and that like the entry part was the part where like everybody came at, at, together. Uh, it's cool to find out as an adult that like, it's uh, different than that. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was bullied in high school. Uh, surprise. Uh, I was bullied for something very cool, which is masturbating. Yeah, I told everyone that I masturbated and went into great detail about it on a lacrosse trip to Houston, Texas, baby, because I thought they didn't know what masturbating was and needed help because I believed them when they told me that they didn't know what masturbating was and I was like, 
guys, you gotta check this out, it's so cool. And you can get an electric toothbrush, wrap it in two rolls of toilet, not two rolls, like two sheets of toilet paper, so it's like nice and soft, and then you can use that to give yourself orgasms. Orgasms, what are those you say? Let me describe it to you. It's like a wave of pleasure rushing over your body. And people started like drawing waves on my locker and like calling me moaning. And I was like, jokes on you fucking losers. Like, I'm having lots of orgasms and like this shit's just making me more excited, okay? Um, uh, you know, I wasn't participating in the sexual groups in high school. Um, won't surprise you maybe by my bullying thing, um, which is really weird because like at my five year high school reunion, yeah, I went to private school so we reunite every five years to just like talk about how rich we are. Um, but it's not like really funny. It makes me not likable to talk about that, so I'll shut up. Um, any who's a what's it? Uh, I guess we could talk about my crush. Um, any, wait, what was I talking about actually? Masturbating? Oh, my five year reunion. Yeah, this guy came up to me and he was like, that was actually so hot. We thought you were so hot for that. I was like, yeah, no shit, you dumb fuck. Like, Anyway, that's just, that's just me getting out my, um, what was her face, her Harlow, like, yeah, fuck it, I'm fucking hot now, bitch, so angry, ooh, angry makes me laugh, I think it's so funny, uh, and people think it's funny when I'm angry too, which really makes me more angry, um, <laughs> let's think about the next thing, I really wish I had big milky titties, really wish, like, I don't want silicone, I want, like, fucking mammogrammy glands, you know, like, I want to like feed myself and a village. I want to be, I want to be like so bursting that I'm self-sustaining. I never have to go to a grocery store. I'm always the one that everyone wants at a party because I can feed everybody. And it's also like really nutritionally dense, you know? So it's like the most, I fucking love things that are like one thing inside of another, like sex, you know? Um, not, not that all sex is one thing inside of another. It can look lots of different ways, but I will say I am so straight that I don't really like getting eaten out that much. I like, wow, now I'm really embarrassed. Hey, don't say what? Like, because I like bet, mm, now this feels more like a, a too porny. Okay, I'll rewind and talk about, is that a white card meaning? One minute. One minute, okay. Um, not like you have, um, you know what truce is in fucking, surrender, surrender. That's the word I'm looking for. I do need to do that. Should I just surrender now? I feel like, I feel like I'm comfortable with surrendering because like surrendering is actually like a really blissful thing for uh, you to do in, in life. And you can come take the mic from me now. <laughs> Submit everybody. Wow. What a night. We've had someone come up and I have to yell at them until they get off stage. And we had someone surrender the mic. Truly, what a diverse showcase we have here. And put that in the Yelp reviews. Uh, all right, we are down to your final comic of the evening, everybody. Tonight's headliner. You will recognize this person from running the show at Kindred Spirits just before this show. As a showrunner, she has the option to bump whoever she wants. But she's such a nice person, she said, I'm gonna let everybody else have all those great slots with people interrupting them and heckling them and all that. Oh, I don't like this, what are you writing down? Are you my wife's lawyer? What's happening? Oh, I know you went to U of R. Are you working for my wife? God damn it, these spiders are everywhere. Everybody, put your hands together for Richmond's most established bitch. bitch. <laughs> Give it up for the HBIC, everybody! Emily Erblin! Good evening, home sweet home. That's right, everybody. tropical tree a tropical tree that produces the most delicious fruit the tree that produces this fruit produces fruit that tastes like pussy that's right everybody that's right I heard about this mythological delicious tree that produces fruit 
that tastes like pussy, but there's a catch. There's a catch in order for it to taste like pussy. You have to drink a little bit of liquor first. You gotta drink a little bit of tequila. You gotta drink a little bit of bourbon. You gotta drink a little bit of vodka. The combination of the liquor and the fruit tastes just like pussy. I thought to myself, I thought to myself, I thought to myself, I'm just like Donald Trump. I'm taking shots for this country. Um, everybody, um, I think it's interesting that the country of China uses great mammals as a manner of diplomacy. If you didn't know, the country of China uses great pandas as a diplomatic token, if you will. Uh, that's right, they, they bargain with their friend, friend countries by giving them panda bears, right? But they don't just give them the panda bears, they lease out the panda bears. If you didn't know, all pandas in the world belong to the country of China, and no matter what zoo they are in, they and their offspring are expected to be returned to China on a certain schedule, right? The pandas in DC, at the DC Zoo, went back to China last year. I think this is interesting. I think this is very interesting. I think this is fairly interesting. I think this is very interesting, everybody. Imagine, imagine a panda lease is like a car lease. The pandas that were returned to Beijing last year, imagine the person who received them on the plane. Did they say, these pandas are overweight. They have too many miles on them. These pandas are addicted to vaping. <laughs> These pandas have been existing on a diet of Dippin' Dots and Takis for a decade. What the fuck, America? <laughs> and then I thought, you know, what if the United States adopted a diplomatic approach like this? What if we decided to loan out a uniquely American animal to our allies as a sign of uh, friendship and respect? Grizzly bear? Do you think it would be something cool like a grizzly bear? Or do you think it would be like a deer? Like the most mundane? Um, a squirrel, a squirrel. Uh, although I think, I think in our lease agreement we should make other countries name their grizzly bears the most American names, you know? Like Jim. Like McKinsey. I don't know, you guys. <laughs> um, you guys, what do high jump champions Ron, Jeremy, and last weekend have in common? A few inches really make history! <laughs> Goodness, you guys. I'm looking forward to growing up. <laughs> I think that'll be really cool. I think that'll be really cool and great for me. I think that'll be really cool and great for me. Thank you, Flo, for the support. Thank you. Um, anyway, when I was a kid, um, I liked to play Risk with my older brother and some of my friends. I think it's one of my favorite board games. Uh, I like the strategy of it. Uh, I can really lock in when I play Risk. But me and my brother were both very good at it. So we used to um, kind of get into a stalemate at the end because we're both incredibly good at Risk. We had solved Risk, if you will. <sighs> so we used to take it out to the basketball court outside when things were at a tie, right? And take shots as a tiebreaker to win certain territories. 
in the game of risk. Anyway, I was thinking about this experience, I was thinking about this experience, and I thought, oh my God, I'm just like Donald Trump. I'm taking shots for this country. Hey, I'm Emma Irving. Give it up for your host, Shane McFadden. everybody give it up for Emily don't forget to check out Emily's show which starts at 7 it's stellar comedy uh, it's stellar comedy it's at Kindred Spirit Satellite over at the old Castleberg Brewery location uh, we'll end the show with this this is true uh, before he went to jail for uh, sexual assault I used to hang out with uh, Ron Jeremy uh, for like and by used to hang out I mean it was like one week I hung out with Ron Jeremy and it was when he was starting to do comedy and it was yeah it was not good, but he had his opener. I'll never forget. It was so funny. His opener was uh, every time people come and see me and then they meet me, and they want to they they ask, uh, "What does a guy with a nine and three quarters inch penis have for breakfast?" Some toast, a couple pancakes, little eggs. That's very funny, guys, because he has a nine and three quarters inch penis. He was the first Jewish guy to suck his own circumcised dick on film. Yeah, that's true. That's why he's famous. Yeah. That's why he's famous? Yes, that is why he's famous. Oh, Damien, the world about the world of porn before the internet was crazy. You could suck your own dick and become the biggest straight porn star of all time. That's Anyways, hey guys, this has been Comedy for Home Sweet Home. Uh, thank you for coming out. We'll be here in two weeks. Thank you very much. Good night. Goodbye. Yeah.